Morning, Bill. Good morning. How are you? Bro, so yeah. uh, lying in bed last night, just kind yeah. of scrolling, and I, and I was going through all the people around me. Oh, yeah. And I just yeah. asked yeah. myself, what are they doing? Yeah. What are they doing? And, you know, what is what is it? It's up oh, yeah. Whatever happened yeah. to them. And, the, yeah. and then I was like, dude, Cato Kalen. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember whatever, him. Yeah. Whatever happened to Kato Kalen, the house guest, right? Yeah, the house guest. So I Google him and stuff, and, yeah. and, uh, and I see that he's on Twitter. Oh, cool. Oh my God. What 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 that guy do with his career? Yeah. And then I pulled up the Twitter app and it says Kato Kalen follows you. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's and then, fantastic. And then it it wasn't like. It, it's like John Cena followed me one yeah. time and I was like, yeah. Whoa, yeah, John Cena. Amazing. And I went back. He's like, he follows 2 million people. Yeah, you're like, like, oh. oh, well. No, Kato Kalen only follows like 300 people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'd like to do a shout out to yeah. the latest fan of the Jeff and Bill that's show, fantastic. Kato Kalen. Oh, we are fans of house guests everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can't pay and afford rent and have to sleep on your friend's couch, you know, we are your show. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yes. right. <laughs> Man, that was that is cool. It was kind of this just yesterday with uh, OJ yeah. Simpson dying, you know, a walk down memory lane. I yeah, was, was. Yeah. Tell me what was going on. What, yeah. what, when was that trial? Ooh, what year yeah, was early that? 90s? Yeah. So yeah. I was born in 81. Yeah. So imagine that kind of 12, oh, yeah. 10 oh, wow. to. Yeah. 10 to 15 year yep. age range and you are watching that yeah like this is the world you've inherited and wow. you're watching all that happen. i was uh i was working at the time uh, oddly enough uh, restaurant work and i remember doing a party 95 so and I 14, okay yeah. wow um i remember working a party when the slow speed chase went on yeah and what we had to do is we literally opened up during the parties the party's going on in one area we opened up an additional dining room that had two big screen TVs so that we could turn on the slow speed chase because that's what people wanted to find out about. Yeah. And again, this is pre smartphones. So yep, nobody right. has it on their on their hands. So right. you can't see it unless we turn it into on the TVs. So the party migrated yeah. into the other dining room. We, that. Yes, we actually we had to move and set up a temporary bar in the dining room because we weren't set up there. So I remember all sorts of things about, you know, in the background. I remember watching it, but I just remember these, you know, large groups of people around the, you know, around the TVs and having to go over and refill drinks and having to put up a pop up bar in this dining room they weren't prepared <laughs> for. So that's my biggest memory of that one. Yeah. Well, how about the trial? Oh, that was interesting. That was one that was it was so all consuming because we'd never had a murder trial of someone like this. And it was done on TV. Yeah. And so because of that, there were so many firsts. And I just remember watching it, thinking how much people in the court, the lawyers and the judge were playing to the cameras. Yeah. How how the aware Edos. they were of it. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the dancing? Edos oh, yeah. Jay Leto? yeah. <laughs> I know. And, and he was playing to it. And there were some tremendous in my opinion prosecutorial mistakes and things they didn't think through uh it's also weird is if you think about it it's one of the reasons that we get the kardashians yeah right. dad's one of the defense attorneys and that's part of what right makes that name become you know exactly have right. some sort of you know profitability when you know kim eventually decides to get naked and then let us all watch her do the humpty hump so that's it those that's like the two reasons that they are famous is one OJ. the fact that dad yep. defends oj then, two that uh, Kim likes to get a freak on and then share it with us. So somehow they turned that into a TV show. I don't know. I I, don't know. Uh, I yeah, remember, remember I remember the gloves. Oh, that was why good. don't think why do you think the gloves didn't fit? Um, because my guess would be uh, because if leather is in contact for a long time with moisture, it shrinks. Hmm. So if again, just if if we assume that they were the bloody gloves, right? If you have a decent amount of blood on them, it will cause a little bit of shrinkage inside of just the, the leather. But I don't know as a whole. And the old, the idea being a, hey, you should have known that beforehand. Yeah. You don't not know the gloves. You know, you, you should know before you ask him to put them on or anything else. You got to know if they fit or they don't, you have to. And, and so that's a real question I had in that step because that, that ended up really blowing up the case. That's what everybody remembers. Yeah. Right. Is the fact that they the, don't fit. yeah. yeah so you must've quit Johnny Cochran's yeah. biggest thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's my guess is just based. And, and the only reason I say that based on leather is I've had uh, some experiences with them contracting uh, a jacket, a uh, set of gloves, things like that. They got really, really wet and they just didn't fit anymore. My dad had a gorgeous uh, shearling coat that unfortunately was out in the snow 
uh, not planned. It was an unfortunate, just sudden thing. And it shrunk like two inches. He couldn't wear it anymore because of that. So that's that's my guess is if there was enough moisture on there, it would go ahead and shrink. There's a famous Friends episode, Ross in the leather pants. Yeah. When he gets right. to the bathroom <laughs> and he can't pull them back up. Same thing. And the yes. lotion. Same thing. Yeah. That's same funny. kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, thing. Text here from Nebraska. Who's Cato Kalen? Um, Cato was the oh. house guest. He lived with O.J. Simpson. Yeah. And it was the hanger on that was supposed to have heard something or seen heard, heard yeah. thumping that night. Yeah. Three loud thumps or yeah. something. And, and so the idea being, did OJ leave the house? When did he come back? They were trying to establish a timeline. Yeah. And yeah. Cato was, imagine Cato being the typical Malibu slash Hollywood surfer dude. hundred percent. That's what it was. I mean, it was a bleak trying blonde, to become an shaggy. actor. Yeah. And, and he's like, the... yeah, yeah. He, he looked like, um, <laughs> he looked like what you'd get if you ordered Brad Pitt off wish.com. <laughs> Basically what he is. That's Kato Kalen. But we do appreciate that he's a fan of the Oh, show. it's fantastic. I do appreciate <laughs> Maybe that. Maybe we'll he's, get him on. He's not going to follow me on Twitter. He's following you. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> not, him on, we'll I get him do on that our show actually. at some point. Yeah. Now, as, as a kid, what do you remember? Because again, you were so you were so young. What, yeah. was the, what were the touch points that you remember? Well, so you had the riots oh, yeah, in that 91. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so you had the LA yeah, Rodney, riots. Yeah, Rodney King. And then for, yeah, Rodney King. And then OJ. That's... Yeah. You're you're just you know you're a Colorado boy being like, Whoa, yeah, this is the world I live in. Yeah, this is crazy. So oh, wow, yeah, it, it all. So in my mind, it's all together, right? Yeah, from Rodney King and the L.A. riots to O.J. Simpson. Oh, that's and, interesting. Yeah, because so, there are there's a big yeah there's a gap there in between the two, and it's right? a real change. And I think that the O.J. Simpson trial changed how we view uh, murder trials and change how we view the courtroom and some other stuff. We saw it a little more performative and also see it's not as exciting as we see on the movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Uh, but it changed, I think it changed a lot of our perspective and also, uh, showed us that sometimes uh, if you have enough of the monies, um, you can avoid things. But, and that's what yeah. sticks in my mind too. The Chris rock bit Yeah, he's like, OJ didn't get off because he's black. He got off because he's famous. Yeah. Famous. And if rich. he was yep. a rental, the bus driver, he would have been convicted. Yeah, yeah, but I would agree. He got off uh, because he was famous. Yeah. yeah, and it was weird. I was talking to um, to, to my kids yesterday about it, and their only reference point is OJ and the murder. They had no previous reference of, of him being no clue about gun movies. Yeah, not at all. And I'm like, stuff. you don't understand. He was like the best running back of his era, yeah. and then went on and was this like you know third string <laughs> character right. in these really funny movies. And they're yeah. like, what? I'm like, and he was good at it. I'm like, and then the Hertz commercials yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. They had no yeah. idea. I showed a clip of Naked Gun to one of them, and they were like, that's crazy. I'm like, I know. He was kind of a beloved guy, and that's why it was such a big deal. But their only thing is murder. Yeah, that's weird. Let's check in on the news with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Guys, I, since you're on the subject, yeah. I have to tell you this story. So Please. in 93, I'm in Dallas. I'm working for the CBS station, Channel 11, and I cover the Cowboys. So the Thanksgiving Day game, I think it's yeah, 93. I'm on the field pregame, and there's OJ. He's the sideline reporter oh, wow. for NBC. So I meet him. Hey, OJ, how you doing? I actually knew his uh, daughter who went to see you. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, I know, your, nice. know your daughter went to see you, and uh, you know, and and I go, oh, is this your wife? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, this is my wife Nicole here. Okay, so oh. she was there with the kids wow. on the sidelines before. It's a famous Thanksgiving Day game, Dallas and Buffalo. It was a snow game, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I meet him on the field. You know, yeah, that was cool. You get to get to meet OJ, whatever. That summer, uh, he allegedly, uh, you know, commits the murders. Wow. So the trial That's comes weird. around. Right, and and. In 95, the trial, you know, we're all glued to the TV. We're yep. all watching. Everybody's watching the newsroom, whatever, every day. It went on for, 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 you know, it seemed like years. But they pull up Johnny Cochran's there. By the way, um, he says this, which was funny during the trial because we all used to make fun of OJ. Uh, running backs that I used to play with used to make fun of OJ because his head was so big. If yeah. you look at OJ Simpson over there, and he has a rather large head. So <laughs> when he said that, <laughs> he we that. all cracked up yeah. during the trial. Oh, but anyway, great. so he, he talks about the glove. And, of course, he's, he, it, it, you know, he tries on the glove. He asked Mr. Simpson to try on those gloves, and the gloves didn't fit. Remember these words. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. 
So during that explanation, he Ooh. pops up a photo of OJ doing a stand up with NBC in Dallas during that snow game, Thanksgiving, holding the microphone. He didn't, the oh, defense, God. the uh, prosecutors did, holding the microphone with the glove, a still shot, NBC News. And, and I'm looking up going, oh my God, I shook the glove. I touched oh, the glove. Did. That was the day. My fingerprints are on that oh glove. My no. So oh, that <laughs> so is the, crazy. It, so, wild. you know, I tell my kids that. Uh, yeah. and they're like, you're crazy. And I'm like, it's amazing. Thank what, was, yeah, what, I, what was the interaction? You just had this very briefly between OJ and Nicole on that sideline. Mm -hmm. Did they? Uh, yeah. Was it cold? Was it, it was it was cold it was cold and I'll tell you this much I I'll never forget this and I'm not lying here uh, I was working with my brother at the time who's a photojournalist and after I met Nicole I was like man she kind of she didn't look good I didn't know that was OJ's wife and she had uh, I mean I'll just tell you right now she had a lot of makeup on and I'm looking oh, wow. and, she wasn't uh she wasn't the friendliest and it was uh obviously icy relationship mm. and uh I, I felt bad for her, you know that day it just didn't it, it, you know he wow. was he was uh, his regular you know uh, jovial personality oj so uh yeah I, it, it was just i, I felt uh I felt very close to the situation. <laughs> I bet. Because <laughs> wow, I'll never crazy. forget shaking his hand and he was yeah. wearing those gloves. And it was the gloves. And, uh, and then they showed in the courtroom that that still of him. I mean, they could have shown it, you know, him wear, uh, holding the microphone in any other game in Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, but it was Pittsburgh. that game. But, but it was that game. Wow. And it was Dallas. And I'm like, oh, my God. God, I touched the glove. <laughs> oh, that is so <laughs> crazy. It made possibly the most famous glove next yeah. to Michael, Michael Jackson's glove. Probably you know? outside so, of Mike. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Wow. And anyway. it's amazing. What a brush with history. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. And now you're doing this. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. TGI <laughs> I'm doing the <laughs> yes. news on Jeff and Bill. Yeah, yes. Your career is really going downhill. Hey, hey. We apologize for this. Kato, Kato, you. Kato Kalen follows us. It all comes back yes. around. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we were so powerful and influential? Yeah. We were so connected. We had no idea. We, you have made it. You have Kato Kalen following you. Yes, wow. you do. Oh, my All God. right. Uh, here that we was go a great story. Thanks, my friend. Uh, you bet. Thank you, guys. 33 and clear in Denver. Expecting highs in the upper 70s today. The 710 five-day forecast is coming up. Our top story, angry parents in Littleton Public Schools calling for the resignation of district leadership. Dozens of parents packed the school board room. Thursday for the first time since the video of the bus aide abusing a nonverbal student with autism was released. Blake McBride, a parent who was told his child had been abused, called for the superintendent Todd Lambert's resignation. Adrian Carcedo Vega, who's accused of stabbing 20-year-old Sashley Diaz to death in Federal Heights in December, has been arrested in Mexico. He'll be extradited to Colorado to face charges. Former Aurora police officer John uh, Aubert, accused of pistol whipping a man, has been found not guilty. It happened in 2021, and the trial began last week. Arapahoe County Sheriff's looking for a driver of a purple Dodge Challenger who ran from deputies, knocked over a pump, at a Centennial gas station on Thursday and driving recklessly at speeds over 100 miles per hour. Anyone with info, please call Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Trump set to make an appearance together at Mar-a-Lago. They're slated to hold a press conference focused on election integrity. Johnson facing threats from some conservatives who want to oust him if he moves forward with Ukraine funding and supporting spying on Americans without a warrant. Also Thursday, former President Trump. I believe, as do various highly respected legal scholars, he is a criminal. He's the worst president in the history of our country. And the only way he thinks he can get elected is to take me to trials, take me to courts, city, state, and federal. They control them all. 
All of these cases that you're reading about are crooked Joe Biden's case because he can't put two sentences together. He can't do anything. So they weaponize government and they take me to court. It's 26 in Boulder, 29 in Aurora, and 33 in Denver. News brought to you by Lair Fireplace and Patio, Denver's premier source for everything fireplace, patio, and grills. Locally owned and operated since 1954. Online at Lair Fireplace and Patio.com. Here come the pioneers if they hurry. Bros, shot, score! It's over! DU headed to the Frozen Four Championship for the 13th time after a 2-1 overtime thriller against Boston U. And, man, Billy's dad played for DU hockey. That's pretty yeah. cool. Years ago. Oh, and, uh, that's exciting. I was talking to uh, Mark Crowley, our IT yeah. guru, the guy running the uh, the video today. He was watching the game last night and talked about the uh, the monster number 71 that Boston has, the uh, the uh, the the rookie, he's a freshman, and uh-huh. that he's just this beast. And talked about how there's this play late in the game where it comes up near the boards, and the ref has to, and it's right in front of the Boston bench, and the ref has to jump up into the boards, and oh. it's a collision between Boston player and the DU player, and the player goes up onto the lap of the ref, and it looks like a, it looks like there should be a penalty <laughs> called, but the ref goes whistle and play on. And there's like, play wow, on, yeah. And the game ends like, you know, literally five, 10 seconds later. Yeah, wow. like really quickly. So it was oh, one of those. That's that, so cool. Yeah, he was like, it was Mark, incredible Mark to watch. Is, Mark is definitely one of the, the great hockey fans in yeah. Denver and, and DU fans. He's, he knows all about that. What I love is he pioneer. knows, he understands how the game is played. The way that I mm-hmm. geek out on soccer, he mm-hmm. geeks out on hockey because he understands, yeah. he understands what it, what the importance is off the, off the puck. It's yeah, really nice. It's fun to talk to I actually to him. like college hockey more than I do the NHL just because, uh, you know, the, the well, the NHL isn't as bad now, but it used to be such a fighting yeah. league, you know, they, they don't, you know, that doesn't go on yeah. college hockey. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoy college hockey a lot, too. Yeah. I enjoy I'm the right abs, but, yeah, it's if I have yeah. a choice, it'd be college now. Yeah. All right. I'm going to leave you right now. If you look at O.J. Simpson over there, and he has a rather large head. Sorry about that. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> the award-winning Jeff and Bill show continues Friday. Blake Olson, News Talk 710 KNUS. The 710 five-day forecast calls for a strong ridge of high pressure to develop, bringing beautiful spring weather to Denver in the front range through the weekend. Enjoy. Temperatures today, Saturday and Sunday, will be in the 70s, overnight lows 40s, through Sunday dry. Monday will continue to be mild, low 70s, afternoon showers and even some thunder possible late Monday afternoon and evening. Then Monday night and Tuesday, trending cooler with developing showers. Meteorologist Don Day on 710 KNUS. Welcome back to the Jeff and Bill Show, an absolutely jam-packed show today. 7 o'clock, yeah. Stefan Tubbs is going to join us, give us an update on that murdering dentist. <laughs> if uh, if yeah. you remember, he did a podcast um, with uh, about all this, the, the dentist out of Aurora, uh, Craig. Yes. Uh, James Craig, yes, James Craig. Uh, uh, trying to uh, po- or that poisoned his wife with um, yeah. cyanide pills and I, arsenic and all I, that. So. I know Mr. Craig. I, I As a dentist? Yeah, he was my dentist. Was he too? Yeah, yours? he was my he was my dentist and Stefan's dentist, and it goes a little deeper. Um, I wrote advertising for them for a yeah. number of years. I was the guy that wrote their advertising copy for a wow. number of years. Yeah, I know. I watched <laughs> yeah. the forty. 48- so we're talking about murder connections. This is really weird today. This is a really <laughs> weird a really show on Friday. Friday. Yeah. So who do you know that murdered someone? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take so, callers. <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh, yeah. Friday um, or Friday. Uh, I watched 48 Hours, uh, yeah. where uh, Stefan and, and George Brockler featured very prominently yeah, in cool. a 48 Hours episode about James Craig and the poisoning of his wife, Angela Craig. He's the dentist out of Aurora. And so in the 7 o'clock hour, Stefan's going to give us an update. There's been some new charges added yeah, to this case. So you're not going to want to miss that 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock, Dave Williams. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are interested in hearing yeah, a response. What's going to happen? So, FEC complaint, you know, people yeah. talking about throwing a, uh, you know, a journalist out. So, yeah, what's it like? Ooh, 
That'll be so a very glad to have Dave uh, joining us. Appreciate him coming on the show in the eight o'clock hour. And then Jennifer say she um, she had a storied career, I believe, with Levi and um, and now is starting the founder and CEO of a new athletics company called XXXY. I know there's three X's there. Don't type yeah. that in. XXXY athletics. And uh, they're a, um, a company that's protecting women in sports. So yeah, nine o'clock, I'll be joining that. And then once the show's done, I'm out of here. Yeah, you're downtown, downtown. Nice. for the Colorado March for Life. So Excellent. that's still happening today. It's going to be a really nice day. Um, that After the show here, I'm going to I'm going to go spend uh, probably an hour or two uh, with uh, several thousand of my favorite friends and wander Ikea randomly because my mother's never been there <laughs> and she needs help getting through there. And it's, I'm, the issue, it's, I'm interested to hear how that goes. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're looking for a uh, closet shelves. She's downsizing house, looking, uh, got a new place. A uh, move is happening a week from yesterday. So I'll be rushing out of the show wow. yesterday. And then right after Brandon Tatum, I'm going to be rushing over again to help her unpack some stuff. So Friday, Thursday, Friday for me is chaos, but we're trying to upgrade her closets and we're going through some things and so i've got some ikea solutions but she needs to see touch you know and that's how it is but she said i can go myself like I, i'm gonna have to come rescue you you're gonna get <laughs> you lost, lost in it. <laughs> yes you don't understand how to navigate the places and, and once you know how to do it and so i'm like then i'll go with you and so she's never really been there uh, she and my dad went started right when it opened up and they got about uh 15, 20 feet inside the store. And they said, this is just too chaotic. For yeah. And they left. So she's never done. And then it, you so. got to go to the bins. I and know. Find the, <laughs> find yes. the furniture. Oh, the really weird thing. Yeah. So we're going to see. I'm planning on not purchasing anything today, but we'll see what happens. Who's but... putting the furniture together? You or the kids? Oh, that'll be me. That'll, that'll be, be you. Me. You're going to L wrench all that oh, together? Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I know my children. <laughs> I know they will cut corners. <laughs> so and, yeah, I I live with them. I see I see how they keep their rooms. <laughs> I'm not letting them do any basic construction. There's no way based on what's in their room. No, 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 no. That's funny. Yeah, no. All right. Do you see this? Denver Post. Yeah. Colorado lawmaker apologizes for leaving a gun oh, in the Capitol that. bathroom. Yeah. Don, channel come on, Don. Yeah, Channel 9 kind of lost their mind on it. Yeah, Channel 9 did a little feature on it. They yeah. lose their mind on well, it. Well, I would say not I lose mean, their it, mind, but it, it was more the idea that, hey, you're losing your guns again. And then and then he highlighted, you know, it was like last session and then talked about Holtorf dropping his. And so, you know, the the, the premise of the story was more about uh, Republicans keep losing their guns. But then the example were only three. So it's like, eh, I get it. But eh, I don't know. Colorado State Rep Don Wilson, a really great guy, by the way. Nice guy. Uh, left a handgun in a state capitol bathroom earlier this week. House, House leadership. And the Colorado State Patrol confirmed this on Thursday. Wilson, a Monument Republican, used to be the mayor of Monument, apologized on social media platform X for the Tuesday night incident after a closed door meeting with House leadership Thursday morning. The State Patrol said a janitor discovered the loaded 9mm Glock attended, unattended on a shelf in the restroom at 9.21 p.m. Tuesday and troopers in the Capitol were alerted, according to a news release. The state patrol said surveillance video showed Wilson had left the restroom 23 minutes before the weapon was found. About 50 minutes after troopers retrieved the gun, Wilson contacted the state patrol to report leaving items in the restroom. The release said shortly after troops, uh, troopers returned the gun to him. In a statement, Wilson said an incident occurred where my farm was left briefly unattended at the Colorado building after the building was closed to the public on Tuesday. The building's ex exterior doors had been closed to the public at 7 p.m. That night, Wilson was serving on a House Judiciary Committee, was working late after the impeachment proceedings against Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. Wilson, a freshman lawmaker who's running now for El Paso County Commissioner's seat, was not uh, immediately available for comment on Thursday, but he did publish and put out a little statement uh, on his X feed, taking a, taking responsibility for it. But just a reminder, yeah. when you go to the bathroom, <laughs> I just make sure you put the gun back on. Yeah, that there's this for me is a self inflicted wound wound for the gun rights people. And, and the problem with this narrative, these stories, they are infrequent, but they exist. And the people that want to restrict your access to the guns will point to them. And they're going to say, if someone that is a responsible gun owner can't remember after going to the bathroom, they have their gun. Why should we 
let more people have guns? Won't we increase the instances of this happening? And the other part that I really, really have with the gun owner is, and this is any gun owner, why after you leave the bathroom or any room is not checking for your gun one of the top two things on your list? That's the real issue I have in this is because this is a responsible gun owner making a very irresponsible decision. And if we are going to say we need to trust the responsible gun owners with these weapons and these decisions, make the right decision. Help us help you. Help us make the right decision. If you're going to be a concealed carry permit holder, you're going to conceal carry. Then when you're leaving a room, uh, maybe one of the first two things you should do is, where's my firearm? He, and I got to wonder if you just put it up on the counters, he's washing his hands. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But but the issue being that the responsible gun owner didn't ask themselves the question, reality. where's right. my gun? And <laughs> that not, seems to be a really important light question. Either. They're not like no. little light things that you can leave there. No, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. My wife I, leaves her car keys all over the house. <laughs> I love her to death. And when I find them, I bring them back to her purse or somewhere else. And it's not intentional, but that's different. Yeah. That is different than losing your gun. I Look, I, I get the critique on personal responsibility. The idea that this is somehow like a... Um, a major thing in the second amendment debate. Look, I don't, I don't think it falls into the category at all because the critique on second amendment stuff is that the only people that should, uh, like when you restrict guns, you make the only people that have guns, the government, and that's yeah. not a good thing. That's the bigger philosophical question. But when it comes to personal responsibility, the only reason I bring this story up is just a good reminder to everybody. Yes. Make sure you secure your guns, especially after you go. Yes. Go potty. You should. And and the idea is, again, help us help you. <laughs> help, <laughs> help us defend this. Because in order, in order to make the argument that we can trust the responsible gun owners, please set a good example. Again, this is not everybody, but the unfortunate thing is these individual instances, because they are unusual, get the louder share of voice. Uh, you will notice that Channel 9 and Kyle Clark didn't do a story anytime this week about all of the responsible gun owners that came to the Capitol and didn't leave them there. <laughs> that was not a story. It only when the unusual happens. Yes. So stop it, please. <laughs> That's the thing. Just help. And then uh, there's the, just the story that a lot of people know of Richard Holtorf yeah. running, running up the stairs, I think, and it fell out. <laughs> yeah, it fell out. Yeah. And like, Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Just to have I more fully secure. support your right to own weapons just you know and 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 uh here's here's the other thing that probably yeah. happened we're late in the session oh yeah and it's late at night because after the, these yeah. guys are exhausted oh i'm sure so you gotta you gotta take extra yeah that's the thing extra precaution the point in which you are so exhausted and so distracted is the exact moment <laughs> that in your back of your mind you're going where's my gun <laughs> that, that should be the point. The little, there should be a light. I don't know. Like in, what is it? The, uh, the movie that Pixar does with the emotions in your head. There should be the firearm safety emotion going, hey, waving their hands going, you forgot something. <laughs> it, should, it should be there in your head. <laughs> oh, that's well. good, Bill. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> Listen, you're, <laughs> your home is a significant asset and choosing the right team to help you sell it can be the difference in thousands of dollars in your pocket. I highly recommend Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team, the realtors I trust. The Empower Home Team provides exceptional service and valuable advice and employs unique systems to maximize the money you can get for your home. Getting an offer above your home's asking price is great, but you're leaving money on the table by not working with Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team. Gay and her experts get their clients an average of $30,000 more. Could you use an extra $30,000? That's precisely why you need Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team. Their exclusive database is filled. Over 14,000 pre-screened buyers ready to make a purchase. Take the stress and hassle out of selling your home while getting the best price. Here's an unbeatable offer. Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team will sell your house for 100% of the asking price, or Gay will pay you the difference. It's an offer you simply cannot refuse. Get 100% of your asking price guaranteed with Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team. Reach out to my friends, Gay Ribble and the Empower Home Team today. Call 833-301-SOLD. That's 833-301-SOLD. Or go to gayhasthebuyers.com. That's G-A-Y-E. 
has the buyers.com. All right, we'll continue in seven o'clock hour. Stefan Tubbs is coming up. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS. At this hour in London, I'm Julia Chapman, and here are the top stories we're following. World leaders are urging Iran to exercise restraint amid fears that it will attack Israel. The Biden administration has warned that Iran could retaliate for the bombing of a diplomatic compound in Damascus, which killed senior figures of the Iranian military. Ishan Gerg reports from Brussels. The German foreign minister Annalena Baerbock has urged, quote, maximum restraint in her talks with her Iranian counterpart. Russia and the UK, too, have warned Iran. The British foreign secretary says the potential for miscalculation in the Middle East could lead to further violence. Since Hamas's October 7th attacks on Israel, there have been concerns over other states getting involved. Iran-backed Houthi rebels have pledged support for Palestinians and have been disrupting shipping in the Red Sea. And now, with Iran vowing retaliation, there are concerns about a wider conflict in the region. European officials are meeting to discuss a proposal on using profits from frozen Russian assets to buy weapons for Ukraine. It comes after the U.S. suggested raising debts and securing them against Russian assets. There are deep divisions in the West over how best to help support Ukraine in the longer term, with some European Union members worried about setting a precedent that leads investors to fear financial markets aren't secure. And that's what you need to know at this hour. I'm Julia Chapman in London on Salem News Channel.
going to be a beautiful day here in Denver. You've tuned into the Jeff and Bill show. Sunny and warm. 75 degrees gets even warmer tomorrow. 80 degrees on Sunday. So enjoy this wonderful weather we're going to have here in the Mile High City this weekend. Let's check in with Blake on the news, see what he's working on. Well, uh, obviously, Littleton parents upset and they want answers and they want LPS leadership to resign after learning their children were abused. Uh, they had a school board meeting last night for the first time since that video came out. We'll talk about that. And also House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Trump meeting this morning to talk about election integrity and much more. So that's what's coming up at the top of the hour. That's great. Thanks, Blake. Uh, Bill. Yes, sir. You choose the news <clears throat> loser. Uh, yes, it is that time of the week where we get to bring back those stories that Jeff and Blake didn't deem worthy. It is. You choose the news <laughs> loser yeah. edition. You are one pathetic loser. New Year. Let's go. Loser. You're a loser. A loser's club. Bunch of losers. You're such a loser. You made me feel like a loser. She's a loser. You are such a loser. Loser. Yes, just like the high school crush that turns you down, this is the loser edition. Once again, these stories are going to uh, weave their best uh, wiles uh, towards our two gentlemen playing the game today, Jeff Hunt and Blake Olson from the news department, to see if they are deemed worthy. Or is a heart broken a second time? All righty. No pressure, gentlemen. This is just for, you know, glory and feelings and, you know, and taking care. All righty. Here we go. These are the stories that we did not do earlier this week. Headline number one, being a good neighbor. Headline number two, unexpected manual option. Headline number three, misdirected anger. And headline number four, masterful preparation. All right, Mr. Hunt, your choice. <laughs> unexpected manual preparation. Yes, unexpected manual option. And this option. comes to us from Denver. Uh, there is a uh, apartment building here in Denver. It is known as the Hirschfeld Towers, located near South Cherokee Street and East Ellsworth Avenue. And recently, the uh, residents there got an upgrade or maybe it's a downgrade to their elevator system. The elevator is broken, so they've installed a manual option. Now, technically, I don't know if the guy's name is Manuel, but he sits on the roof and he ro and he raises and lowers the oh, elevator man. as you need. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So what happens if you are in Hirschfield like, Towers? Does he pull them up? The yes. Rope? Yeah. It's, it's like a pulley system that they've installed. <laughs> and so what happens is this. If you go to the Hirschfeld Towers, you go and you knock on the elevator door. Knock, 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 knock. And then you yell, I'm on two. Can you take me to the lobby? <laughs> and then uh, Manuel or whoever it is on the roof yells back down, get in. And then they open the doors and you get in and you ride. You go where you want to. And the residents said it's really weird. But oddly, they say it's somewhat satisfying because they get to, you know, interact with the a human. And they say it's much quieter. The ride's easier. And so far, the residents, they say it's a little more difficult, but they enjoy the manual option. So, yes, you have a manual elevator. It's like the old school elevators. Yes, man, back it when is. They, they were afraid yep. people wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. So they had an elevator Same operator thing. in there. Yes. So you have a manual <laughs> operated elevator here in Denver. Isn't that great? All right. Uh, I, I, this was an yeah. interesting status all the other day. Yeah, what? I don't know if it's totally true, but it yeah. might be. Do you know how many people have died in as a result of an elevator falling in America? Oh, I bet all of them that were inside the elevator. <laughs> just, <laughs> what just a guessing. dad joke. <laughs> yeah, That's thank good. you. Zero. That. Really? Yeah. Is it the no, jumping thing nobody has died yeah. um, as a result of an elevator falling oh. in America. So it's normally just we open the doors and we fall inside then. Right? <laughs> yeah. Which does if happen. No, so. right. All right. A second choice, sir. Being a good neighbor, misdirected anger, or masterful preparation. Masterful preparation. Yeah. So uh, now Blake from the news department has been talking about this all week. It is the Masters. Big, giant golf tournament. Yeah. And as they were warming up and preparing, Tiger Woods decided he needed some extra prep. He was getting ready for the Masters by being the master of his domain. Yes, Tiger Woods said that he was abstaining from any of the Humpty Hump in his uh, preparations for doing the Masters. He figured that if he did not participate in any of these sexual activities, he would play better. And I disagree. <laughs> I think he's wrong. I've heard this before. The people yeah, say if you I've heard from athletes because then you got yeah. the extra testosterone yeah. going. I, I think yeah. it's wrong. And here's why. Um, I... Uh, during my high school playing career, abstained from sex, not not by choice. 
Uh, this was other people's <laughs> choices. And I never played better. It was never a performance boost. In fact, many times, those cheerleaders were an incredible distraction. That's not okay. So I disagree. This is not proven. I disagree with the science. This is not Slump okay. Buster. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I could go there. We're not going to. Okay, well, get us in so much trouble. All right, Blake chooses our final story this morning. Being a good neighbor or misdirected anger, sir? Uh, in, in honor of the great Late, great Mr. Rogers. Let's go with neighbor. Ah, being a good neighbor. Uh, maybe your insurance company is spying on you, you know, oh, just to be oh, a good yeah. neighbor. Insurance companies reportedly are now employing drones to aerial view your property. They want to see if your house is really missing those shingles. Have you taken care of those tree branches? Is there some way we can raise your rates? So, yes. So the new profit motive uh, being reported by the Wall Street Journal is not only are they challenging policyholder content and where you're, how you're doing your claims, they're using the drones to survey your property. One, to see if the claims are actually real. Two, to ding you for anything else they can. Why? Because, of course, they are. That's how <laughs> wow. it works. Look up public adjusters. I'm telling you, exactly. that's the answer. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is it's like all this technology was like, look at all the things we're going to be able to see. And now it's like, yeah, it's going to yeah. make us pay more. Uh, thanks, Blake. We'll talk to you in a few minutes. That is the end of You Choose the News. As always, uh, Jeff and Blake are our winners. I'm just a giant loser. And I'm telling you, this is probably not sponsored by Roll Out Shelves. They refuse to be associated with this silliness, but they will come to your home and give you a free estimate today. They will organize your kitchen or bath. See their work at RollemOutShelves.com. They've even come to Jeff's house, and mm -hmm. he said they were really nice. They told him from Salem, and it was wonderful. Yep. And he mentioned you choose the news, and uh, someone might have kicked him in the shins. Not hard, <laughs> just a little bit. But they're wonderful people. Go to RollemOutShelves.com. Check them out. They'll take care of all your clutter. Back to we you, We love Joyce and Brent. They are great yes, they are. Um, and a lot of fun, and they they play along with us, which is great. They do. I love them. Uh, okay. I saw this news fair, a news item yesterday trending on, on Twitter about the Elizabeth Book Fair. Here is uh, Kyle Clark with the hard-hitting journalism oh, yes. of Channel 9 with all the problems yeah. that our state is facing. It, These it, guys went after yeah. the Elizabeth Book Fair, which I take a little personally because I live in Elizabeth. And you know he's a hard to journalist. He's going to become one of the first in the state to ditch scholastic book fairs <sighs> in favor of a conservative alternative that promises no racial or LGBTQ content. Superintendent of the Elizabeth School District led the search for a book fair provider that would exclude, quote, controversial materials contrary to the values of our communities. Scholastic said that that whole idea of, of what's the values of your families, well, that's subjective. Scholastic said that they'd provide the district with a list of book titles and themes and things like that, and they could exclude whatever materials they wanted to. But instead, this week, the Elizabeth School Board unanimously decided they would go with Sky Tree Books, which promises a book fair free of, quote, LGBTQ content, foul language, critical race theory, and dark magic. Sky Tree is a project of actor and author Kirk Cameron. He launches a direct alternative to Scholastic. It works with conservative publishers like Brave Books, which offers titles teaching kids about the dangers of communism, critical race theory, and cancel culture. I just feel like it's so subjective. Like, what are these values that they're talking about? And, and where are my values represented if my values differ from someone else? It's very clear that um, they are not being inclusive to our entire community. And that is concerning <laughs> to me. That was Roxanne Aviles, who uh, ran and lost for a school board seat. There hasn't been a public board discussion about the decision to go with SkyTree. Reach out to the district to talk about this and didn't hear back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my oh, wow. gosh. Uh, so first in that piece, they admit to the fact that, yes, you can pick and choose whatever books you want. Yeah. But uh, uh, how, how dare you or at least newsworthy that uh, Kirk Cameron's book fair organization is somehow controversial give me a break yeah. why do you think why do you think the school district wouldn't just pick the things on the scholastic list what was the why, what do you think the reason is well i mean it's kind of cool to partner with kirk cameron i think the other day somebody on twitter was said jeff hunt is the kevin sorbo <laughs> of scott bales and i was like yes <laughs> that is, that really is awesome i love those guys i think they meant it as is, a dig oh sure that's good though but i was like Kevin Sorbo's awesome. Scott <laughs> Bayo. I've got, and, I, and my wife goes, I don't know who those are. And I go, honey, oh. 
Hercules and yeah. Charles in charge. Yeah, exactly. Charles in charge. Yeah. I got compared also, to them. Also Chachi. Chachi. Yeah, yeah that was Chachi. before my time. That was I a little bit before my time. Oh, believe me. Make me feel old again. <laughs> I, I mean, look, so these uh, these conservative areas, and Elizabeth yeah. is very conservative. In fact, they often don't even run Democrats in office there. Yeah. Um, and and they want, in, in some cases, to send a message, right? Like, we're going to partner oh, yeah. with, um, we're going to partner with these conservative book organizations and they have every right to do so yeah. well, i just saw I, I i i thought it was funny like they even admitted in the story that you can pick and choose what books you have there oh, yeah. based upon whatever values you want to have if if denver public schools wants to partner with scholastic nobody's no one yeah. cares about that but if a conservative School district wants to partner with a conservative book organization. Well, then, well, holy crap. Nine you know, News is going to make sure that you cover that. You know what I think it is? The reason that the the thing with uh, Nine News at least bubbled up inside the newsroom. And it's there at the tail end of the story. The fact that one of the guarantees is not to have books about dark magic. <laughs> like, what? And, and you know what that is, though? That's Harry Potter. Is that Harry Potter? Yeah, that's Harry Potter. That's no, what they're they doing. Don't Harry, and I've run into families that doing. don't like Harry Potter. Oh, I know, but that's what that is. But, that's an exclusion for Harry Potter and anything in that genre. That's what that is. And that's, that's in my opinion, that is why this rose to the level of a news story inside of Channel 9. But I wish they would have connected that dot. That, to me, that's the issue of the story. That, okay, they're choosing, but the group they're choosing says you can't read Harry Potter. And you, that would be it. That would be the story for me. If I was going to write it, that's the story I would write. Do you think um, we're <laughs> do you think we're going to be able to hold these things anymore? I mean, what no. books are in a book fair? No. And and I also wonder on this, on this uh, group they're doing, do they do the little monthly things that Scholastic does? You know, they got the monthly order book forms that go home. And that's an actual fundraiser for the schools as well, because when you buy a book, the school normally gets a percentage. Was it, wasn't Scholastic where you got you had like Ferrari posters? Yeah, maybe posters, maybe I was posters. maybe that's yeah. all I cared about when yeah. I was a third grade yeah, it boy. Was that, it was that thing that's a, it's just a you know, two page that folds and it comes in. You got yeah. books on the front and then you and the back page where all the fun posters and you can get stickers and other stuff like that. Yeah, that's Scholastic. Yeah. And that's them. So I'm just wondering if and that's a fundraiser for the school throughout the year. So I'm wondering if this other group offers that or will the school still just partner with scholastic for that which again is a little weird because we're worried about them being so wokey woke yeah. well, i would be okay with the flyers but we're not okay with the fair and, but it doesn't even but, seem know. to me like uh, elizabeth was trying to send a message maybe no. they maybe again they just wanted to have a different yeah. vendor and if and if they like the vendor and if and if the cameron group offers them books that they feel you know if the selection is more tailored to what they are go right ahead go right ahead i i just i throw rocks at channel nine because i'm like you missed the story the, the interesting <laughs> part of the Harry story Potter, is it's a Harry on. Potter. That's if you want the if you want the hook on this story, it's <laughs> Harry Potter. And it's because of the large number of people in Colorado that have read Harry Potter. And it's the large number of, par of parents that were also or now have kids that did read Harry Potter. That's your hook in the story. It should have been the book Dark group magic. doesn't like Harry Potter. There's your story. They're not going to get attention, I, but they, they print at the end. And it was just whoever wrote it. I'm sorry. It's you amazing missed it. you to missed me the that, that the news was yeah. a conservative district went yeah. with a conservative vendor and th for their book. Fair. And here's another thing that you're very shocking. You're, this is, it is very accurate that you point out that this for me is advocacy journalism mm -hmm. because the story is about exactly what you said. This conservative county, what are they conservative book fair provider? <gasps> the horror. Uh, no, no, no. The, the story is the fact that they don't have the Harry Potter. That, that's the that's the sexiness. That's the sizzle. That's it. That's the fact that your kid can go to the book fair in Elizabeth and you will not be able to get the Harry Potter books. And so if your kid's a fan, what are you going to do? How, how do you tell them that? No, they don't have them. So that's, there, that's it, though. Only there was a website where you could have if a only, book delivered to you tomorrow. Yeah, or if there's just a thing you could go and um, borrow it for free for a while. <laughs> if only we had that. If only there were other options. But again, that they missed the story. But again, you, you're great at pointing it out because it is. This is a great example of Channel 9's advocacy journalism. Yeah. They wanted to push this as a story missing what was actually the sexiness inside of it. Even then, it still would be advocacy journalism, but you missed the story. Yeah, well. We all want a kinder, gentler way to experience wellness and overcome pain. I'm thriving and fighting back my workout soreness with UltraCur. UltraCur is a patented, non-prescription natural capsule that works fast. Surveys show that 50% of people using UltraCur find relief within 48 hours and half of those within two hours. Experience UltraCur for free. 
Go to any Metro Denver or any Denver Metro Natural Grocers and ask for the health coach or the vitamin manager for your free three-day trial of UltraCur. UltraCur is fueled by a patented technology that gives you the true edge to support your peak wellness, energy, and active lifestyle. If you've tried everything without much success, even other natural curcumin products, you owe it to yourself today to try UltraCur. UltraCur gives you unique control over your daily wellness. It's gentle on your stomach, and it's a natural antioxidant. Get curious, Denver. Head to the natural grocers, grab your free three-day ultra cur trial, no strings attached. Wondering about the research? Well, you can get the lowdown at getultranow.com. That's getultranow.com. We'll continue with your calls and texts. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
That's right. Next Friday, a week from today, live broadcast. You can enjoy a delicious breakfast down at the Black Eyed Pea in Castle Rock and hang out with us from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Yeah, you got to be there live because we are not doing the videos. You can listen to us on the air, but if you yeah. join us on the YouTube, the Rumbles, the uh, X Twitter thingies, uh, not going to do that just because of facilities and things like yep. that. So the only way to really uh, get the full 3D experience is to come and visit us. <laughs> You can get all those details at 710knus.com. That's 710knus.com. Up next, Stephen Tubbs is joining us. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710knus. Very happy Friday to you all. 7 a.m. in the Mile High City. You yeah. tuned in to the Jeff and Bill Show. 710-KNUS. Oh, you made it almost to the weekend. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, it's right a victory. There. Friday nights are always fun, man. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm your co-host, Jeff Hunt, along with Bill Thorpe, bringing you the freshest insights, hottest takes from the right, left, center, and crazy. It's going to be a beautiful day in the greatest city in America, and we're gearing up for a whole nother hour of engaging discussions, critical analysis, and most importantly, your calls and texts, because this is where Denver's voice is heard loud and clear. So get another cup of coffee, brew in Denver, and let's dive into the issues that matter most to you right here, right now. Let's check in on the news with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Good morning, Jeff. Appreciate it. 33 and clear in Denver, expecting highs in the upper 70s today. The 710 five-day forecast is coming up. Our top story representative, Don Wilson, has apologized for leaving 
his nine millimeter Glock in the bathroom of the state capitol. A janitor found the loaded gun. State law prohibits guns in the capitol. Angry parents in Littleton public schools calling for the resignation of district leadership. Dozens of parents packed the school board room on Thursday for the first time since the video of the school bus aide abusing a nonverbal student with autism was released. Here's the mother two days ago. Had bus footage been routinely audited, the torture and torment of my sweet boy could have been stopped. Now, Blake McBride, a parent who was told his child has also been abused, called for the superintendent Todd Lambert's resignation. Adrian Caracito Vega, who's accused of stabbing 20-year-old Sashley Diaz to death in Federal Heights in December, has been arrested in Mexico. He'll be extradited to Colorado to face charges. Former Aurora police officer John Aubert, accused of pistol whipping a man, has been found not guilty. It happened in 2021, and the trial began last week week. House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Trump set to make an appearance together at Mar-a-Lago today. They're slated for a press conference focused on election integrity. Johnson facing threats from some conservatives who want to oust him if he moves forward with Ukrainian funding and also supporting spying on Americans without a warrant. FISA. And let's take a look at the weather right now. 28 in Thornton, 27 in Castle Rock, 33 in Denver. It's going to be beautiful today. Plenty of sunshine this afternoon. The sun is a mighty powerful heat, but it's almost impossible to go near the sun. A full moon is a complete rounded circle, which is made up mostly of gases. <laughs> I had to. Congresswoman <laughs> Sheila Jackson. Lee, that was a earlier, great point. Earlier this week, if you haven't heard it, I just you see the, they use it all week. Did you see the Babylon B where they're like, Harvard has now appointed <laughs> Jackson <laughs> Lee to head up the astronomy department. <laughs> yeah, yes, I did. It was amazing. She, she only lives like two or three miles away from NASA. That's what cracks me up. <laughs> That's a great point, man. Man. Hey, speaking <laughs> of hot. Here come the pioneers as they hurry. <laughs> Bro's shot. Score! It's over. Denver to the championship game. The DU Pioneers headed to the Frozen Four Championship for the 13th time after a 2 1 overtime thriller over Boston U. The Avs will. Uh, the play host to Winnipeg tomorrow, but DU plays in the championship game on Saturday. I think it's Michigan, and let's see who else is. Oh, Boston College, I believe. Tiger Woods finished uh, part of the first round of the Masters at one under. He's now even after 15. They had to conclude, and, and they're trying to conclude the first round today because of weather. And Bryce, probably the celibacy. Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah, that's yeah, right. Helping him out. Just saying. Call back to last hour. <laughs> Who asked that question? I gotta, <laughs> I gotta look that one up. Exactly. I, I, I Who comes up and says so? That. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, so personal. <laughs> yeah, and it's Tiger. Come on, it's not like he hasn't been through anything. <laughs> I know. And and there are so many um golf club hole and ball washing jokes we can do but we're not going to we will let the audience complete the joke on your own kind of your own complete the joke at home kind of a thing do it yourself joke i see bill murray right now yes uh, nuggets at the spurs tonight at six o'clock rockies at toronto at five o'clock and uh say hello to stefan he loves sheila jackson lee uh the award-winning <laughs> jeff and bill show continues it is friday blake olson news talk 710 knus 710 five day forecast calls for a strong ridge of high pressure to develop, bringing beautiful spring weather to Denver in the front range through the weekend. Enjoy temperatures today, Saturday and Sunday will be in the 70s, overnight lows 40s through Sunday dry. Monday will continue to be mild, low 70s, afternoon showers and even some thunder possible late Monday afternoon and evening. Then Monday night and Tuesday trending cooler with developing showers. Meteorologist Don Day on 710 KNUS. The 710 five-day forecast.
All right, saw this in the news in the Denver Post the other day. Aurora dentist accused of fatally poisoning poisoning his wife faces new charges of asking daughter to help cover up the crime. Our good friend Stephen Tubb and George Brockler were both featured on a recent 48 Hours episode. If you missed that, you should definitely go check it out um, about this entire case. So I, I texted Stephen yesterday. I said, Stephen, can you give us an update on what's going on here? Joining us on the Jeff and Bill show, the legendary Stephen Tubbs. Hey, morning. Morning, brother. That's a big buildup for a Friday early. Wow. <laughs> we've been up for we've been up way too long, and we're in like our second cup of coffee. So yeah, it's, it's one of those. That's true. I haven't yeah. had my first yet. So yeah. good morning, guys. Good it's morning. great. I miss you both, but I, I miss Blake more. So you please pass <laughs> along my my love to Blake. Will do. That was a great yeah. thing about so, Sheila isn't this a Jackson. crazy story? Go ahead. <laughs> well, and he was not he was not lying. Actually, that was completely accurate news reporting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is crazy, Jeff. And, and I actually, I was out of state on a, uh, getting on a plane yesterday and I, I got your text and I had heard a little bit about it because the producer for 48 hours, uh, that, that, uh, the episode that, you know, George and I were on, uh, it, it was really, really, um, you know, just a great opportunity to meet, uh, to meet her and she and the, the, the crew, they were very professional. So, you know, w- we would text back and forth over the course of the last almost year. And so when I saw her text yesterday morning, I was out of town on, on, and doing something else. And, and I, I glanced at it and then you texted Jeff and I, I, I went and I, you know, then fine tooth comb going through this article as I told you, I don't know much more because I've been, you know, since I left KNUS, I, I haven't been uh, certainly following the case as much. We did that 48 hours interview last August. Wow. Uh, that was last August. Last wow. August. Yeah. Wow. Brockler, Brockler and I were interviewed last August and that's how the TV industry works. It just came out, what, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but the bottom line is, and I'll shut up is, is look, the, there's there's new court filings this week in the case of James Craig, who is accused of poisoning to death his wife. Um, I'm hoping if you listen to this radio station, you know by now that you know the general story. But the new allegations are, according to prosecutors, it, it there was a solicitation of trying to cover up a crime. And again, I don't have any inside sources anymore, but the the allegations are that it was James Craig's daughter. Uh, and as you and Bill both know, I mean, look, there are six kids, five daughters, one son, and these additional charges haven't been official because the judge hasn't, you know, kind of tacked them on yet. But it is just another sickening uh, portion and saga of this story. And so the idea of covering up wasn't so much that his daughter was involved in the murder of his of her mother, but that she, that he tried to get her to stay quiet about it. Is that well, again, I wish I knew more yeah. I, and I don't. Um, but you know, the, a lot of, it could be, I'm, I'm saying hypothetically and yeah. I am no attorney, but asking, uh, someone to do this or that to maybe perhaps while you're incarcerated, that's the other thing this is right. going on while he's in the Arapahoe County detention center. But it's, 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 it's uh, I was going to say me in jail. I don't want to say that it would be bills in jail. And he calls Thank Jeff you. and he says, Hey, can you, Hey, can you, can you do this or that go to a computer, do this? These are just all off the top of my head, yeah. but you know, take this and do that or say this or say that. And we'll see. Um, but it's I, just, I, you I, know, I, and I know Bill, I know Bill knows, knows the Summerbrook dental saga as well oh, as I yes. do. And it's just amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. Bill, do you want to talk about, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned just briefly that, that yeah. you wrote ads for yeah, them. Yeah, I wrote ads that. for them, especially when they're starting out. I hadn't for the last, you know, And I read them. Years. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You read them live. It's, and it, yes. it, it was weird. And there was, and I don't know if this was your experience, Stefan, but there was kind of this change in the business a few years ago where all of a sudden the dental hygienists, there was a lot of turnover. The ones that were there a long, long time weren't there. The front office staff, lots of turnover. You wouldn't see Dr. Craig come into your exam room quite as often or it was much shorter. And uh, in all honesty and personally, I felt that there were some health issues just based on he didn't look as healthy as he had been. And of course, stress and some other stuff. But uh, I mean, my experience was the last few years, about four or five years, there was a turn 
in how the care was provided. And I saw less of Dr. Craig and more of his partner. And the partner was much more involved. Yeah, but that was just my personal experience and anecdotal. And that was that was a fascinating part of the story. So I highly yeah. recommend you go watch the 48 hours episode that features Stefan Tubbs, you know, formerly with KNUS and then George Brockler as well, because they were covering the story so well. But that the the, um, the partner yeah. was a big a, a big break because he he didn't want to put up with this he yeah he's like, no, no, he was like okay. there's no reason you should be ordering cyanide to the right. office the what is going on yeah. here yeah jeff bill you both know um ryan redfern's the key and that's really interesting bill to hear your perspective because you saw dr craig um i'm sure as a patient much um oh, a patient or personally oh, yeah. i mean i hadn't seen i hadn't seen jim craig since he gave me a root canal and the next time I make eye contact with him, um, he's in an orange jail jumpsuit and we have a staring contest in, in the Arapahoe County courtroom, you know, early last year, I guess it was a little more than a year ago, but, but it's interesting about the, I never even thought about the turnover. Um, and you're right. Not looking back. I should have told 48 hours this, I looking back, I, I understand, uh, I mean, I can remember now how there were a couple of new people, and this was the kind of small to me mom and pop business that you had your front office manager. That person's probably going to be in that position a long, long time. Sure. There's turnover, but I hadn't seen him as a patient in, you know, I just, I moved out of the area and and he didn't, you know, want to continue the commute, but yeah, he's he's right near here. Go ahead. So he always right near here. And so I continued to use him and commute and it was probably Uh about nine months before the charges dropped was the last time I was in the office. And I, I remember, um, going into the exam room and as you're walking in you know the office you turn to the right as you're coming out of you know, the right. front office uh-huh. area and you're walking back to the exam rooms and they spread off to your left and your right so it's like a bunch of little booth areas or cubicle areas it's kind of the idea and the offices for the dentists are far down on the left hand side and i do remember turning and looking down the hall and seeing dr craig stand there and i and i just remember in the back of my mind going oh he doesn't look good just because of it, just his coloring. No, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. I'm like, it just doesn't look good. Yeah. Again. I, yeah. And I, yeah. I think that's the, that direction is exam room number nine, where yeah. he's allegedly on the computer, yep, you know, searching how much, how much poison does it take to kill a human and yeah. ordering the arsenic and, and, and cyanide. And, and here's something crazy. I'll tell you the one, yeah, go ahead. The, yeah. the one thing guys that, oh, sorry, the one thing that I have said, and we did the podcast arsenic DDS, Mr. Crowley, you know, was, was the master behind the scenes at, at, at putting that incredible, you know, several issue or several episode podcast series together. And I, I just, every time we talked about this case, whether it was on my show or on the podcast series, you know, it was, I always said the same thing and I, I will say it again this morning, you know, not lost on me. And I know our listeners that have followed the story is there are six children and granted yeah. half of them are of, of adult age, but there are six children that are forever without a mother. I think they're going to be forever without a father because personally, I think um, he's going to be convicted. Uh, He's innocent until proven guilty. But then back to really the reason why Jeff, you texted and it's in the post and the sun and the Gazette and all of that this morning is these new allegations by prosecutors that, you know, there, there was an effort allegedly for Jim Craig to, um, to involve one of his kids in trying to, I guess the official charge is like solicitation to cover a crime is basically it. But even to do that, I mean, it's just, it's, it's heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak with this story. Yeah, it is. In, in the 48 hours episode, you, you learn that he's in pretty significant debt, $2 million of debt. He's now met a new lady, but there's no sense that they were actually in a physical relationship. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't no, get that through the 48 no, hours. What but... I understand, and Stephen can correct me. For what I understand, it wasn't physical. They had met at some sort of a conference. They had been talking, and he had been trying to get her to come out here to visit, I think was the narrative. But right. Stephen would and be much did. better at this. Yeah. No, no, Bill, you're exactly right. Um, and, you know, I got to say, I apologized last year on the air, but I, I'm going to say again, if anybody saw that 48 hours, uh, or you will look, I thought because, um, I don't know, being a, a human being and, and being in the news business and reading stories my whole life, yeah. there always seems to be another woman, right? There's always <laughs> that, you know, side piece, there's this, there's that look in this case, I, I still will say, I'm sorry, the way I jumped to conclusions last year on the air, 
that Karen Kane, this this orthodontist from Texas, who he met uh, to your point, Bill, at a at a an orthodontist or a, a dental conference in in Vegas in February. Angela Craig was dead in uh, in mid March, so it's not like this woman was uh, was involved in a months long relationship, and it's not her fault either because Jim Craig said. I was going through a divorce and I live in my own apartment. Well, yeah. all of that was lies. And um, so, yeah, the, the, the whole a- angle of the, of the other woman, I mean, she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Him. I, I kind of feel that he had been looking for an out. He had been thinking about it. He had been, this is just, again, my pure speculation. Right. And right. she became that card. She became, here is my, I finally found it. Here's the person that I can leave uh, my wife for. I can get rid of this. I can, I can leave the family. And so he saw the opportunity, but I, I just have a feeling he was going through the process mentally before. That. This is what I don't understand. It's 2024. We have a thing called divorce. Yeah. Like what? Or well, even well, back well, then, Jeff, I hear this too. We even had divorce back in 2023. Right, yes, we did. Right. I've heard of that. Right. Like yes. why, if you're done, you want to check out, you want to go, why kill your wife so that you look like the good guy? Is it part of the religious community he's a part of? That type of thing, maybe? I, I personally, I, I mean, I want special. I was a Stephanie. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, no, I was I was just going to say the following. I have no idea. So please, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would guess that it had to do with the idea of the dissolution of the marriage and how the assets are going to be split up. That chances are, again, just speculating, that he was going to be left with the majority of the debt related to the business, and he then would lose income related to the business as well. That he looks at this, and again, I'm not saying this justifies it, but he looks at this going, if I make this, if I get this divorce, I'm going to put myself in such a hole I can't have the same standard of living. I'm not going to be able to achieve this. I can't be, I can't find my next sugar mama, whatever it is that whatever it is, I think in his twisted mind at that point, the negative impact on his ability to live as a single guy huh. was too much. And I, I think that's where he got to it. And, and again, also makes him sympathetic. Well, yeah. And Bill, I also think to, to, to add, yeah. I've, I've talked with people about this kind of quasi on the record and a lot off the record, but um, you know, look, He's also, if, if the allegations are true, and again, I don't want to get sued. I mean, the guy yeah, is different. innocent until proven guilty, but I'm telling you what I've heard as a reporter and as a former patient, I mean, look, the, the bottom line is if the one mistake and the prosecution is going to get all over this later on this summer, when it start when the trial starts, if there's a trial, um, the one mistake was sending potassium cyanide to your dental practice and you weren't there when it was delivered and somebody else opened it. If that does not happen, this yeah. could have been quote unquote, the perfect crime. You think yeah. so? Because you think even with the, the, the testing of the blood, cause that was pretty compelling during the 48 hours. It was, and there, that message at the end was, if you do this, you will get caught. Well, yeah, but at the time, I mean, and with all due respect to that guy that they interviewed um, in yeah. San Diego, um, that is true. And they may have down the road if they tested, you know, blood specimens or, or samples or, or what have you. But keep in mind, Jeff, that from from late February to um, about March 15th, I believe she was declared uh, uh, deceased. Uh, she was brain dead on a Wednesday. She was, she passed away on a Saturday. Jim Craig is arrested on a Sunday morning. Um, they were, they had done all the tests. They mm. had not found anything. The reason why I'm saying is if there, if the potassium cyanide isn't found in an open box, when the, yeah. when the box is unopened, yeah. if that doesn't happen, a whole chain of events doesn't happen. Mm. And, and you know, that, and I, what I mean by that is, there's not a red flag raised at the dentist's office. The business partner, um, Redfern, doesn't find out. He doesn't have that planted in his mind that um, she was possibly poisoned, and he doesn't report this to the nurse at uh, University Hospital. Yeah, they, they may have down the road find it, but they would. They 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 certainly had to look. She was in the hospital three different times, yeah. and she is dying every time. Also, in this 48 hours piece we did, you know, her poisoning levels 
or the the arsenic levels, and uh, uh, they're going up while yeah. she's in the hospital. Let me tell right. you, if, if if you can't read between the lines, I'm going to hit you with it right <laughs> now this morning on a Friday. The allegations will be he was continuing to poison her while she was in the hospital. Yeah, there are going to be some issues there. And it's and I think you're right that without finding the box that nobody asked the questions because she had been getting sick previously and it would be very easy to say, well, this was something she was dealing with, something gastroenterological. This was something with her stomach. This was something here. We don't know. It's one of those mysteries. But yeah, without that box being opened. I don't think the tests get done at all at the end because he wow. can, in, in some ways he can even refuse them and say, I don't There's no reason to test. This is something that was awful that happened. Yeah. yeah. And you guys know no statute of limitations. So, you know, this could yep. be one of those, it could have been one of those where if he is guilty, you know, he committed the perfect crime. Nobody checked his internet. Nobody. I mean, look, I've had a law enforcement official tell me if the allegations are true, Jim Craig is the stupidest criminal to ever walk the earth. <laughs> because he left his computer. They, there was not even a a serious computer forensic um, autopsy, if you will, on his computers at Summerbrook Dental. Y- you guys do realize what they did when they got the subpoena and they get the warrant, the search warrants and all of that. They literally turned the computer on if it wasn't on already, and they clicked the history button. Oh, no. And up pops the, what are the five deadliest poisons that aren't detected. (laughs) How do you kill someone with a, I mean, we're not talking about, you know, maybe the most, well, wisest of criminals. If he is. Well, well, your friend and mine and Jeff's friend, George Brockler always says that, yeah, the law enforcement says we don't catch the smart ones. So, (laughs) you know what? Uh, Unfortunately, my, my stupid cell phone cut out. I did not hear that great line. Bill. (laughs) Brockler, Brockler always says the, yeah, we don't catch the smart ones. Yeah. No, you don't. Can I, can I, can I lighten things up real quick? Please, please. Okay. If you do watch the 48 hours piece, I am totally outing George Brockler right now. (laughs) And I know, by the way, good luck, George. I think you should, I think you should be the next district attorney in Douglas County. With that said, and I love George, I've known him a long time. When you see George in um, an office setting, typing, typing, if you have it on DVR or on your phone and you're watching this, this, you'll never forget this uh, image. Uh, It'll be emblazoned on your brain. He is not only fake typing, but he's going, he's almost like wrapping his finger. He's just going, that's great. It's terrible. So I just wanted to give you that little, (laughs) we've, we've talked some heavy stuff this Friday morning. I just wanted to say George Brockler is in fact fake typing. And I don't know why he just didn't start typing other things. (laughs) I love that because it's like in, it's like you get into the, uh, um, you know, the movies and all of a sudden they're like, we are in, I have broken through all of it. And you're like, wait, hang on a sec here. 30 seconds. Hold on. Wait, how come we're in already? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a few text yeah, messages there's... here. Eric Manning, our, our friend reminding us that there was death insurance money involved. So, you know, that's a good reason. Well, there's always, a, yeah, seemingly always there's insurance money, but you know, that's, if there, is, I'm no cop. But if there is a, the, I mean, wouldn't you say one of the most obvious is if somebody is a, uh, you know, you know, uh, succumbs to anything or they die suddenly or something like that. I mean, cops aren't stupid. They're going to look and see the beneficiaries. And I want to give a shout out to Eric Manning, that great American. There you go. Uh, five five four nine texting. I miss Stefan. There's a lot of love for oh, you here, great. brother. Uh, Stefan Tubbs. He did a great. A podcast and series on our YouTube channel. So if you go to 710K in US on the YouTube channel, you can watch that. And then also check out the 48 hours episode about this entire case. It's very enlightening and features former hosts, Stefan Tubbs and George Brockler. So that's a great piece to catch up on all this. We'll continue to track it. And Stefan, uh, we'll have you back I to give us guys. updates if you can. Oh, we miss you too. Yeah, I miss I miss you guys. I miss all of you listening. Um, even if you hated me, I, I miss radio, but not as much as I thought. I'm I'm enjoying my <laughs> new life. Uh, no, seriously, I miss Kelly and Michael and Crowley and all of that. Uh, those those great folks there. I will say, I hope you can have me on in the next month because our documentary film yes. devastated, oh, yes. which you guys you guys have been just champions for, and I love you for it and appreciate it more than you'll ever know. But we have the premiere dates that are coming out. We're going to have premieres uh, in 
from south. We're going to have in Colorado Springs, uh, in Lakewood, in Boulder, and in Greeley. And, and it's on the fentanyl crisis and disaster. And it, guys, is in 34 years of doing what I did, like you guys, and in the business, yeah. uh, this is the best project I've ever done. And I am so forever in debt for the families in Colorado that wanted to make sure that another family does not go through the, the pain and horror. So I'd love to come back on and we'll be putting stuff out on, on, um, where can people on watch the, the internet. trailer? Yeah, they can go to YouTube and, and mountain time media or put in devastated. Um, there's also a website, um, that we've created since I last talked with you guys. It's devastated co for Colorado devastated co.com and all the details are there oh good i i really want to be there at the premiere but then i also really don't want to be there at the premiere and just you know it's only like you jeff and i talking right now we're going to ignore the listener because um i've seen the trailer and i know based on the subject and how you're presenting it i am going to sob in that theater because of the stories you're going to tell it is going to break me in many ways because of those stories so i'm not sure i want to do that in the public but yeah yeah, if I can salvage it for you this way, Bill, you're yeah. also going to be so extremely pissed off at some of the laws and decisions oh, wow. in this state. And we don't make it political. They made it political. They Ooh. being the politicians. And, and it's an exposure of the lunacy in Colorado. So I, sir, I'm going to try to twist your arm to go, brother, because I would oh, uh, and I'll give you a box of Kleenex because I'm going to have okay. one next to me as well. And I've, I've seen it 50 times already. And it is it is right, absolutely OK, happening. my friend, if we can share, I'm in. But I, I love the idea that you're talking <laughs> the, the laws, too, about what, what is the causal relationship between these? I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Stefan Tubbs, so cool. creator you, of the film Devastated. Go to DevastatedCO.com to see the trailer there. there's devastatedco.com they've got screenings coming up in may and greeley boulder lakewood and colorado springs thanks for giving us an update oh, on you. the dr jim craig story anytime guys love you miss you and uh have a great weekend thank yeah, you for, for god's sakes uh, go, for god's sakes go, go do something productive with yourself it's, if you just waste <laughs> enough time with us <laughs> I mean, hey, be job. kind to blake because I, I do truly <laughs> love him so, oh, he's you so know, good he, 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 we're all lucky to have him. Yes, we are. We are. Thank you so much. See you guys. Guys, generally, we talk about medicine and effective treatments for erectile dysfunction and other men's sexual health issues. Today, I want to talk about love. The one you love is the light of your life. And if you're like most men, you want to do whatever you can to nurture your relationship. But if you're suffering with ED, you know the impacts the condition is likely having on you and on your partner. Rocky Mountain Men's Clinic has served the front range of Colorado for nearly a decade and has successfully treated tens of thousands of men. Schedule a consult with Rocky Mountain Men's Clinic today. Your initial visit is only $99 and includes a medical consult with a licensed medical provider, a T and PSA test, and if medically advised, a test dose. And if the test dose doesn't work in the office, your visit is free. They have five locations in Colorado, Fort Collins, North Denver, Central Denver, Castle Rock, and Colorado Springs. Stop dealing with the lack of confidence that ED brings. Call them today at 720-440-7900. That's 720-440-7900. Or visit RockyMountainMensClinic.com. That's RockyMountainMensClinic.com. So great to hear from Stefan. That was really cool. That was that fun. Was neat. Yeah. It's a lot nice of great text messages. We should, uh, Eric saying we got to get him down to the black eyed pea. That'd be fun too. Oh, that would be fun. I just fun. don't know if he gets up that early. He was an afternoons guy. Yeah. And then he, now he gets to have a regular <laughs> sleep schedule <laughs> yeah, and, oh man. Cause I mean, most people don't know there are two, three o'clocks every day and we see them both. There are two people, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> two of them every day. And the first one is not any fun. <laughs> it's nothing exciting or good going on then. We'll uh, keep up with this uh, James Craig saga, but if um, if you haven't watched the podcast on 710K in US's YouTube page, go there. You'll get a lot of information, but that 48-hour show was really impressive featuring Stefan Tubbs and George Brockler. Guess what I have at home still? What's that? I have uh, Summerbrook Dentist uh, sunglasses. <laughs> sunglasses on the side that say Summerbrook Dental. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what happens with this uh, trial, and then maybe I'll eBay them. We'll eBay see what happens. Them. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh man, I've got some Post-it notes from there too, as well at home. <laughs> it's just a just a very sad story. Angela oh, Craig, the wife, mother of six, was allegedly poisoned by her yeah. dentist husband. So it's awful. And again, the allegations are just horrible. And I love the fact that Stefan pointed out that we're we're frankly the big tragedy in this are the kids that are left yep. behind and. The thing that hurts me the most on that is where, again, if the allegations are true, where the father has put his children because 
that is a conversation they're going to have to have with people for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And it's going to be with your closest friends. It's going to be with the people that you bring in that you may want to have as your significant other, the person that you want to date at some point or another, you're half going, you're going to have to discuss families and how hard these choices have made it on those kids, not just to go on without dad and mom, but also the fact that they have to share this scar with all the people that are close to them for the rest of their lives. That is oh, it's just awful. It's awful. Horrific. Uh, when we come back, I want to get into two things about the Biden presidency. One, the rise of inflation. Do you really think that's going to affect him this election? 19% since he became the president of the United States. Are there other issues that are going to push that down? And then he has just announced that he's going to be forgiving a lot of student debt. And by forgiving, I mean passing it on to everybody else with more inflationary practices. So we'll get into all of that next. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS. At this hour in London, I'm Julia Chapman, and here are the top stories we're following. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has invited House Speaker Mike Johnson to his Mar-a-Lago resort for a joint press conference today. Haley Bianco reports. Election integrity will take center stage today as House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Donald Trump hold a joint press conference at Trump's Mar-a-Lago Resort in Florida. The joint appearance also comes at a time when Johnson can benefit from a strong show of support from the former Commander-in-Chief, as Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene has been threatening to oust Johnson from his post. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says freedom and democracy are under threat around the globe warning that Ukraine today could be East Asia tomorrow. He was speaking in the first address to a joint session of the U.S. Congress by a Japanese leader in almost a decade. Mr. Kishida reaffirmed his country's deepening relationship with the United States, urging it to continue playing what he called a pivotal role on the world stage. His speech follows his visit to the White House and came shortly before an unprecedented trilateral meeting alongside President Joe Biden and President Marcos of the Philippines, where the three men pledged to bolster economic and defense ties in the face of growing Chinese influence in the Indo-Pacific region. And that's what you need to know at this hour. I'm Julia Chapman in London on Salem News Channel.
bunch of old dudes sway into Britney. Oh, this is uh, this is early Britney. <laughs> Britney's uh, song. Oh boy! Uh, welcome back to the Jeff and Bill Show. All right, saw this in CNN yesterday. Since Biden took office three years ago, prices are up 19 percent, according to CPI data. And that hasn't won him many fans, even as former chief of staff Ron Klain criticized Biden for not doing enough on inflation and talking too much about bridges while egg and milk prices are rising, according to audio obtained by Politico. Biden was quick to respond with optimism Wednesday morning when this report came out that inflation continues to go up. Prices in March were up 3.5%, a jump from February's 3.1% initial inflation rate. <clears throat> we have more to do to lower costs for hardworking families, he said. Then, like any politician would try to do, he highlighted two areas where prices are lower than they were a year ago, eggs and milk, though both are starting to rise again as bird flu spreads. Gas used to be his go-to, but after Wednesday's report, he can no longer say prices were lower now than they were a year ago as OPEC supply cuts and switch to summer fuels sends prices marching towards an average of $4 a gallon. How big of a deal do you think this is going to be in this presidential? It'll be a pretty good deal. It'll be a pretty big deal. Um, it's going to be a motivator. Uh, for people, some people that were Biden voters to uh, go back to Trump, I believe. Um, but I think this also highlights how, as Americans, uh, we are somewhat self-centered and uh, also uh, highlights uh, the poor condition of our educational system. OK, go Be for it. What because, do you mean by that? OK, uh, and here's here's the reason. Why are the prices going up and what? is the policy or decisions that Biden has made in order to cause this. Because the art, the article from, I think it was with the uh, New York Post, talks about right. Biden, Biden caused inflation is in the headline. And yet in that headline, I don't see anything that they point, or in that story, anything they can point to to say, Biden did this, and this is why your prices rose. Biden, I mean, how it, the prices of eggs are going way up. Do you think, uh, how many how many you, eggs did Biden buy? Do you think, do? though, that it's necessary to tie it directly to him? Um, or can you just go, you're the dude in charge and things stink. I want a different dude. And, and I think that is the decision that the voters are going to make. The problem being, you're the dude in charge. We now need to change. And this comes back to the coach issue. We're going to talk to you know, Dave Williams and stuff later. Yeah. Same thing. Um, is the next coach going to be better or what are they going to change we talk about you know the football teams and any team you're running towards that playoffs and you're not happy with the direction the coach is taking you is a change in coach going to solidify your team and make you cover up those holes or does it actually just make you more uh thin paper mache is it going to tear things apart and what they need to show and i think that thankfully the democrats are really bad on this is messaging they're awful at the messaging around this uh, but the other side of, that the Republicans are going to have to figure out is what are you going to do about it? If you're going to complain, inflation is so high. That's why we need to do what? Because the only thing I've heard so far from Trump is tariffs and tariffs are going to make prices go up. That's an interesting way to fight inflation, to charge everybody else an extra 10 percent. I, I will see how that works out. I think it's negative when the prices go up. People aren't going to say, hey, he's fighting inflation. But so far, that's the plan. So that's what I'm curious about. Here's the New York Post op-ed by James Bovard. Biden pays the price for causing runaway inflation as Americans are buried in bills. The Biden re-election victory parade hit a pothole the size of Ohio on Wednesday. It's a great opening line, by the way. The latest consumer price data shows inflation is accelerating and hitting an annual rate of almost 5%. Democrats fear the inflation could soon be higher than President Biden's approval rating in January of 2022. That's a really, really good line. <laughs> I predicted here that inflation would politically bankrupt Biden and that it would be the wrecking ball that could politically destroy Biden. According to the team Biden storyline, inflation went from a non-existent threat in 2021 to transient in 2022 to simply a bad memory in 2024. 
But along the way, the purchasing power of the American dollar fell by almost 20%. Regardless, it was a bad taste to mention it in public. Biden called Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey a stupid son of a gun. He didn't say that, but I'm going to edit it in 2022 for even asking a question about inflation's impact. Is the Democrat Party incurably out of touch? On MSNBC Wednesday morning, Rep. Jim Clyburn was delivered, who delivered black primary voters and secured Biden the Democrat presidential nomination in 2020, was gushing praise for Biden and denouncing complaints about inflation as, quote, disinformation from social media. Here's here's uh, Blake, where I or Bill, where I think that we could end up in the Mark Udall world on abortion. Yeah. Where if Democrats just go all in on abortion, we talked about this yesterday. If you missed it, go back to the 710K and U.S. podcast. But if if they go all in on this and abortion becomes the focus and they're going to all the ads are going to drive towards that. Yeah. Meanwhile, everything's way more expensive than it was prior to Biden's presidency. Yeah. They could really seriously come across as tone deaf. They could. But in order to do that the Republicans, in my opinion, need to offer a solution. And you read the the writing from the New York Post, and he said it's the Biden-caused inflation. Anywhere in that article did he point to how or where Biden caused the inflation. I'm waiting for that. In all of these analyses, I'm waiting for what they're pointing at and saying, here is what President Biden did to cause the inflation. Because according to the figures we have at the tail end of last year, corporates Corporations made $2.8 trillion in profits. Corporate profit margins as a percentage of their income is now at 15%. That is the highest percentage it has been since 1950. So the corporations are making more money than they ever had. And they have their highest profit margins based on income ratio than they've had since the 1950s. Where's the dangerous economy? Where's the economy that sucks so bad? If it is so bad that you and I and the listener are struggling to pay our rent, our mortgage, health care, put food on the table, how do corporations make record profits and have record profit margins at the same time the Dow Jones Industrial Average breaks records? We're, we're above 38,000 right. right now. The low point in the Biden administration, beginning of 2020, middle of 2020, is right around 19,000. The stock market dropped to 19,000. It's now at 38. And we're supposed to sit here going, wow, what an awful economy. Help me square that so circle. So I think there's a few things there. I think most people are going to connect this, and rightfully so, to government spending. Help me understand that. How? What is that? What is the government spending on? Because they devalue the dollar when you, like, for instance, when you forgive the amount of debt student loan debt that Biden wants to. It's yeah. absolutely an inflationary practice that How? reduces the value of the dollar How? because you make money worth less. How is it worth less? Uh, the banks are because doing it. Because you just, the just banks. wrote it off. The banks are making, it didn't, it, the banks it, are making record somewhere. profits. The banks are making record profits right now. So again, the harm, because that, that's, who, that's who the harm is directed at, would be the banks don't get this money back. You, th you don't think government spending does anything to affect inflation? Um, it does. But the issue being this is we are talking about we are talking about the prices of the grocery store. Right. How, how many eggs did Biden buy? How much flour is he buying? Uh, where's that? I, I don't see them. And this is the issue. The things that we complain about, the prices going up, that's not what the government's buying. The government's investing in things like infrastructure and we're getting things like, you know, building chip plants and stuff like that. Yes. Yes, there is some inflationary pressure, but we're talking about grocery store prices, things that ha happen every day. And if it is so detrimental for the government to go out there and spend money, then it should be detrimental for all of us to spend money. And that would include, again, how do we get to record profit margins? How do we get to a 15 percent level in a difference between income and profits? That's the highest it's been since 1950, nearly three trillion dollars at the end of 23 profit. Yeah, for American I, corporations. So Wh where's the bad economy here? It, where is it? <laughs> to, to everybody else who has to deal with all the cost of everything. Okay. So, so it, here, here's, the, here's in the article. Fault. 
you, you, well, you're actually arguing exactly what Joe Biden said in a speech to Democrat members of yeah. Congress in 2022. Biden raged at being blamed for inflation. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is the government spending more money. Simply not true, said Joe Biden. It's not. The op-ed responds, Biden has driven up the cost of gasoline by pursuing expensive green policies. He's backed higher costs for businesses through taxes and higher wages. And he's spent, spent, spent. Biden wants to fight inflation by illegally forgiving more hundreds of billions of dollars of federal student debt and building and renovating more than two million dollar homes, two million homes, he announced uh, Wednesday morning. Does Biden still believe endless trillion dollar budget deficits will solve all that ails America? Well, here's the thing is if it's the idea that we're renovating homes, that means any home renovation, if it, it, it drives up costs, uh, then home construction would drive up costs. Any spending. See, the issue is that I understand. I agree that government spending can drive up costs, but then you also have to say consumer spending would drive up costs as well. Uh, consumer confidence is falling, but has been high. And according to what we see from the corporations, we've been fine spending the money. And what we see from the corporations is a differentiation in their input costs and their output. I brought up the Pepsi Senate, PepsiCo a number of weeks ago. Pepsi CEO in 2023 said our input costs have returned to pre-pandemic levels, but we're not reducing cost. They're telling investors, buy Pepsi because we're going to take more money from the consumer. Coca-Cola in their pro in their meeting said we have earned the right to raise prices on the consumer and we'll do it again this year, despite input costs falling. We can go to Johnson and Johnson, Johnson and yeah, Johnson diapers, okay. no, diapers, so diapers, wood pulp was up during the pandemic. The price of the input cost Johnson and Johnson during their earnings call last year said have fallen back to pre-pandemic levels and they're still going to charge you $22 right. for diapers. Despite and the fact how does they the do free market 16. work in that? How does the free market work in that? Yeah, it's supply and demand. I how, get, but, but right, that partly, no, no, no. hang on a sec. Another company comes along and says, we're going to offer but, it cheaper and people buy that. But they can't. But this, they can't because it's a monopoly. You can't break it. If you look at the number of diaper companies, you don't have a new diaper company that's coming along. A great same thing with meat. Di same thing with company. meat packing. And same thing with chicken. Same thing with pork. And so, unless, Bill, and so unless you want Biden to come in and put price controls on things or break up monopolies, you can't fix it. You this. have record credit card debt. You have people having to work two jobs. They need to provide yes. $12,000 just to live yes. like they did four or five years ago yes. at the same level of standard. And yep. it's Coke's fault? Well, and it's the diaper company's fault? Meanwhile, the, the government is spending trillions of dollars and put us to $35 trillion in debt, and we're just going to uh, forgive all the student loan debt, and it's Coke's fault? Who's responsible for the prices you're paying at the store? Is it Biden or is it the companies? Who's responsible? Who chooses the pricing? I think I think you're switching the story no, line here. I'm not at all. Yes, you no, are. No, no I'm because asking. We're talking you're about the deflation of the second. dollar. You just said you and just said like, whose fault is who's... it? You said you asked me whose fault is it that you're paying more at the store? Who sets the prices of the product? You you have put them solely in the category who of who sets the prices. Who sets the policies that these companies have who to sets abide the by? Prices. Who sets the policies that these companies have to abide by? The government. But guess what? In the earnings call, the companies don't say we're charging more because of these onerous government policies. These companies say we charge more because the consumer is a sucker. That's what it is. So far over a break. All right. Jim's giving us a call. We'll get your calls in just a second. 303-696-1971. Uh, you're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, KNUS.
seen the most engaging political analysis in your policy text because this is where Denver's voice is heard loud and clear. Up next, the interview we've all been waiting for. This is going to be exciting. The text messages pouring in the chairman of the Colorado Republican Party and candidate for Congress in Congressional District 5, Dave Williams, will be joining us right after the news. Let's check in on the news with Blake Olson. Good morning. Morning, Jeff. 39 and clear in Denver, expecting highs in the upper 70s today. The 710 five-day forecast coming up. Our top story, Aurora Dennis James Craig, who's been charged with first-degree murder in the poisoning death of his wife, now faces a new felony charge tampering with evidence. He tried to persuade a family member to tamper with evidence starting the day before he was arrested. The great Stephen Tubbs. These additional charges haven't been official because the judge hasn't, you know, kind of tacked them on yet. But it is just another sickening uh, portion and saga of this story. Both Stephen and Billy were patients of Dr. Craig. Angry parents in Littleton Public Schools calling for the resignation of district leadership. Dozens of parents packed the school board room on Thursday for the first time since the video of the school bus aide abusing a nonverbal student with autism was released. Blake McBride, a parent who was told his child had been abused, called for Superintendent Todd Lambert's resignation. Former Aurora police officer John Arbear was accused of pistol whipping a man. He's been found not guilty. It happened in 2021. The trial began last week. Defense attorney Kristen Frost. Officers are to presume that people they haven't searched, particularly felons with warrants, as armed and dangerous. And use your common sense. That makes sense. That's a logical assumption that they would be armed and dangerous. He arrested Kyle Vinson, who was wanted on an active warrant. Representative Don Wilson has apologized for leaving a 9 millimeter Glock in the bathroom of the state capitol. A janitor found the loaded gun. State law prohibits guns at the capitol. 55-year-old former Fort Collins youth pastor Hippolito Gomez Perdoma is accused of sexually assaulting children for three decades. He's charged with five counts of sexual assault on a child by a person in a position of trust. A new analysis uh, est- uh A new analysis estimating that President Biden's new student debt relief plan will cost taxpayers around $84 billion. They will be forgiving almost $7.5 billion in student loan debt. Rashida Tlaib won't uh, condemn death to America chants in her district running from Fox on Thursday. Rally in your district, people were chanting death to America. Do you condemn? I do not talk to Fox News. But do you condemn chants of death to America? I don't talk to people that use racist tropes. Why can't you just say whether or not you condemn people chanting Fox death to America? Why are you afraid to talk to Fox? Fox News is not, not listen, using racist tropes towards my community is what Fox is about, and I don't talk to Fox News. Is death to America racist? Is chanting death to America racist? I'm talking about your guys' racist tropes. Of course. 36 in Lakewood, 38 in Parker, 39 in Denver. Here come the pioneers if they hurry. Throws, shot, score! It's over! Denver to the championship game. DU headed to the Frozen Four championship on Saturday. What a thrilling 2-1 overtime thriller over Boston U. The award-winning Jeff and Bill show continues on this Friday. Blake Olson, News Talk 710 KNUS. The 710 five-day forecast calls for a strong ridge of high pressure to develop, bringing beautiful spring weather to Denver in the front range through the weekend. Enjoy. Temperatures today, Saturday and Sunday, will be in the 70s, overnight lows 40s, through Sunday dry. Monday will continue to be mild, low 70s, afternoon showers and even some thunder possible late Monday afternoon and evening. Then Monday night and Tuesday, trending cooler with developing showers. Meteorologist Don Day on 710 KNUS.
All right, you're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. It's been the interview everyone's been waiting for. Dave Williams is joining us, chairman of the Colorado Republican Party and candidate for Congress in in Congressional District 5, which is down in Colorado Springs. Chairman Williams, thanks so much for being on the Jeff and Bill Show. Thank you. You bet, Jeff. Good to be here. So uh, give us an update on how the assembly went from your perspective, uh, the energy down there, what you all achieved. Let's start there. Yeah, you bet. We, uh, I think we had the vast majority of people very pleased uh, when compared two years ago. I don't know if you recall, but when KBB had her assembly in Colorado Springs, there were long lines just to get into the building that lasted about an hour or so uh, just for people to get in. And the weather wasn't that great. Uh, this go around, we made sure that people got in very quickly, uh, that they were comfortable, that there was enough food and I wanted to make sure that no matter what happened, we would continuously have some business going on. There wouldn't be dead time uh, so that we would respect people's time uh, for coming to the, the assembly. I think overall it was good. There were a few things that were sort of a hiccup at the end, uh, but by and large, it was a success. I remember one uh, state party assembly where they didn't have food. So, you know, there are, uh, there are times when uh, 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 we were there all day long and no uh, vendors to provide any food. That was years ago. Um, uh, Dave, uh, how's your race going? Give us an update on Congressional District 5 race. Sure. I Well, we think it's going really great. Uh, obviously, we have President Trump in our corner, but we're also earning the support of other congressional leaders, uh, especially within the Freedom Caucus. We just won over uh, Matt Gates. Last week, speaking of the assembly, uh, he gave a one heck of a speech. It was rousing and inspiring, and he had 2,000 people on their feet. So we're happy to have him in our corner. And man, we're about 50 odd some days just from the ballots dropping. So it's coming quick, and we're on a path to victory for sure. All right. Let's talk uh, just briefly about the uh, reporter uh, being removed from the uh, state assembly. Uh, a lot of coverage from that. Give us your thinking behind removing her. Yeah, you bet. Um, she had been denied press credentials. And it wasn't just her that we denied press credentials to. We also did it for uh, News Channel 9 with Kyle Clark and that and that rag publication or television you know, broadcast. And then we also did it for the Denver Post, which is certainly you know, a, a terrible publication for Republicans. And our thinking was simple. Like, look, you guys can lie about us. You can give us unfair coverage all you want, but that doesn't mean you get to come in and disrupt our assembly process or hassle our assembly goers. If you're going to lie about us, go do it outside the building. We don't, we don't need any part of it. But we, we also made sure that we would continue to send them press statements and releases about the assembly too. So it wasn't completely cutting them off. We just, we didn't want them to be a part of our our program or our agenda. And, and sure enough, even those who were there, they were asking inappropriate personal questions to delegate, uh, to delegates. And I had to make an announcement like, Hey, you don't have to give them your birthday. You don't have to give them your address. You don't have to tell them who you are or anything like that because they were getting a little intrusive, the ones that we allowed in there. And I'm, I'm sympathetic to this because I've, I've hosted events too. And as the organizer of the event, you feel like you, you have a responsibility to protect your attendees from harassment. And uh, one time we had Samantha B show up to the Western conservative summit interview. She's a comedian on, uh, on cable television, interview a whole bunch of people and then cut and slice that to make our attendees um, look really, really bad. And then uh, with both with channel nine, Denver post, I've had just, just outright wrong reporting uh, where they they uh, omitted things, made the event look like it was something that wasn't. And so I've I've had that sympathy with you of, of going, you can't come into my house and just take a cramp on the floor. Um, I'm, why would I invite you to do that? It doesn't make any sense to invite as an organizer event to invite you to come in. You can still access uh, the information that comes to the event. But if you're going to treat our attendees poorly, if you're going to write bad stories, then I have no obligation for you to come. But then some of the complaint was, well, we got to stand for free speech and freedom of the press and the First Amendment. What's your response to even some Republicans who said that, Dave? <laughs> I, the, look, the, those publications and most 
quite frankly, are they've become nothing more than an extension of the Democrat Party's PR efforts. They, these people are Democrats. They just masquerade as journalists. And the First Amendment doesn't apply to our political organization as it relates to the press. In fact, we have, you know, this little thing called the freedom of association. We don't have to associate with um, diehard enemies, especially those who have purple hair like Sandra Fish and want to ridicule us for somehow not being normal when they in of themselves are okay with the nonsense that Joe Biden and all the Democrats have been doing and what Jared Polis and the radicals are doing here in Colorado. It's again, if they want to go lie about us, go do it outside the building. Don't harass my my fellow Republicans. Uh, Some critiques coming from both an FEC complaint about uh, your role with the state party, as well as uh, Richard Holtorf calling for your resignation because of the endorsement of other candidates. Um, Can you respond to those? Let's start with Richard Holtorf. The state party should not be endorsing other candidates. That's his claim. What's your response to him? Well, we we had a bylaw change. Uh, This was last year back in September. We made it clear that we wanted to favor assembly candidates, those who go through the assembly and make the ballot through the assembly. We wanted to favor them because we're getting tired of petition candidates spending millions of dollars to get onto the ballot um, while snubbing, you know, the very grassroots folks that dedicate their time, energy and resources to the assembly and convention. That's number one. Number two, we had 2000 people in uh, the convention stand up and say, yes, we need to endorse these people. Uh, this wasn't a unilateral decision. This was a decision by the overwhelming near unanimous uh, assembly and convention delegates. Uh, we're merely executing on that and we make no apologies for it. Um, we, you know, look, we wish all the candidates the best as they go through their, their uh, primaries, but we're making a decision. And that decision was for Lauren Boebert and if Holtorf or anyone else wants to stand against President Trump and those convention delegates, good luck. And why in your mind is it important for the state party to endorse? Because we want to make it clear to everyone that we are supporting those who care about our party and who support our party. Without the assembly, without the convention, there really is no more reason to have a political party, especially after campaign finance laws and limitations uh, coupled with open primaries and automatic voter registration. Those things have have almost crippled and killed our party. And the last thing keeping us as relevant as we are is the assembly and and convention process. So we're going to protect it and we're going to promote those who go through it. Kelly Maher has submitted an FEC complaint that you're utilizing the party to benefit your own uh, congressional race down in Colorado Springs. What's your response to Kelly? It's a frivolous complaint. It's without merit, and she knows it. I mean, really what this comes down to is Kelly Marr is a Jeff Crank supporter. She, she's she been supporting Jeff Crank ever since he ran 18 years ago and lost, and again 16 years ago and lost. Uh, this is just 20 years of Kelly Marr being a big fan of Jeff Crank and doing it whatever she can to create headlines to try and take down our winning campaign, but it's ultimately going nowhere, and if those of you are concerned about divisiveness it's coming from their camp and we're just going to keep on plugging forward with president trump and the grassroots behind us yeah it, when we interviewed both kelly and richard recently a lot of the response back was look uh, the the chairman of the gop is kind of like the head coach of a party and we're heading into playoff season that type of thing um the response wasn't in any way overwhelming to call for your resignation. In fact, it was, let's give them a chance to, to run this out and see if we're going to win in November. Cause uh, like a head coach, you're going to just be kind of judged on wins and losses as the chairman of the GOP. And you look forward towards November is the Republican party in a strong position to be able to gain more ground in the state of Colorado. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a number of factors that are going to, you know, bring us to victory come November. And, you know, first and foremost, President Trump, we've earned his trust and he wants the current leadership to stay in place. In fact, that was one of the things we had talked about when I initially approached him about running for Congress. I mean, he wanted to make sure that no matter what, someone like me or me specifically was fighting in his corner. And that's why he's devoted resources and efforts And again, I think there's a great chance he's going to come out here. If we upend all of that, then that's going to be disastrous 
you know, for our prospects in 2024. But we can't lose sight of the fact that Joe Biden and the Democrats in Colorado are just, they're killing themselves. They're, they are hurting themselves in a big way, especially with all the radical bills that they're passing uh, as we speak, coupled with the property tax increases that we can certainly lay at their feet. I mean, we have good things going for us. We just need our candidates focus on getting the message out that Democrats are out of touch, they're corrupt, and we're the solution to restore balance back to Colorado. And I understand that primaries can get divisive. Uh, That's part of the process of going through a primary. Um, How do you, as chairman of the Colorado Republican Party, pull people together after this process? And elections is about getting more people on your bus than the other guy gets on his bus. So uh, how, how do we win and how do you pull people together uh, after the primary, uh, after this contentious primary season? You know, I think I think what we need to do is we need to, you know, stop pretending that we're somehow not going to have, you know, tough primaries where there's going to be hard feelings. There's always going to be hard feelings because we're talking about um, trying to get the best candidate who will square off against the Democrats. And we all have strong feelings about who that may be. So I think we let it play out. I think we let folks you know, have their say, let them beat each other up and let the competition, you know, go on. But after that, that's when we really do need to come together and and unify. Um, And we can do that through, you know, brokering meetings and events with all the candidates if they want to, or at least encouraging the losing campaign, not to say, you know, bad things about the winning campaign. I've been on both sides of that. And I can tell you that the best thing that we can do is focus on the main objective after the June 25th primary, which is defeating Joe Biden and the rest of the radical Democrats. If we just keep focus on that and telling the voters like, hey, any Republican is going to be better than any Democrat every day of the week, then we're going to win. Now, got a question for you. Dave Williams, uh, chairman of the Colorado GOP party, joining Jeff and Bill is a little bit outside of the conversation we're having right now, but um, had gotten a text on it, another email message. Uh, The question being John Eastman being disbarred, is he still going to be involved in any legal work for the Colorado GOP? Um, Well, he's primarily shifted uh, responsibility to Randy Corcoran. Um, And I don't think he's been disbarred yet. uh, Yeah, it could be correct on that. I'm just going to free out from the text, but yeah, it could be be still working. But yeah, the recommendations there, yeah. But there, yeah, but there is sort of a transition taking... uh, taking over at the moment so that he can deal with uh, the disbarment proceedings that he's having to deal with. And right now the primary attorney is at this point, Randy Corcoran. Thank you. Yeah. Randy's a host on 710 KNUS on Saturday. So you can listen to Randy as well. Um, Dave, I really appreciate you addressing all of this head on and speaking to each one of uh, these questions that have come to us. Um, It's going to be, Look, I've worked for the state party before. It, this is uh, this is going to be a big battle. People are, are concerned about the direction of the state, and um, and I want to see us come together and be able to really address the radical left, like you said, Joe Biden, and and the problems that he has uh, brought to this nation, um, to the state. So, uh, thank you for being on the Jeff and Bill Show. Thanks for uh, yeah, taking you. these questions head on. You bet. Happy to be here. Happy to come on anytime. Just that at the end of the day, let's get through the primaries and then let's square off against the real the real opponents here, Democrats and Joe Biden. So we'll win. Uh, on that note, if uh, if you know you're not successful in the primary race, would you would you be getting behind Jeff Crank or or uh, uh, Bob? Um, who I'm, I'm uh, the other guy that's running down there, uh, Bob. Uh, uh, some of the other folks that are running in CD five, but um, are you, are you w- w- ready to get behind them I- if you don't win the primary? Yeah, of course. Look, I've been on, I've been on losing sides too. I, two years ago, I didn't defeat Doug Lamborn and I still encourage folks to make sure they voted for him and all the other Republicans that were on the ticket, save a few exceptions. There was one Joe day. I just couldn't get there with the, with the codifying of Roe versus Wade, but I wasn't going out there actively doing anything. And I think, that's uh, what I would expect all the other activists to do. If your if your your guy doesn't win, um, at a bare minimum, just kind of stay out of it. But sure, encourage everyone to get behind the Republican nominee because we have too many things at stake. Uh, this country is in danger, and again, any Republican most of the time 
is going to be better than a Democrat. So let's uh, get behind all of them and make sure we go to victory for President Trump. Dave Williams, chairman of the Colorado Republican Party and candidate for Congressional District 5. That's the Colorado Springs area. I really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks so much. Yeah, you bet. Take care. God bless, guys. All right. Uh, Yeah, directed and took on a lot of those questions, everything from the press and media and the treatment of reporters there. And look, you may disagree with him. This is this is kind of what I've uh, my concern on all of this uh, charges that Dave needs to resign or we need to, you know, uh, the freedom of speech stuff. You heard his answers. And if you don't like the direction of this of the state party, then change it. Yeah. Right. When that time comes up and you want somebody else in that position, well, then start organizing to put that in. But uh, changing the head coach right before the playoff season, that's where I'm a little more hesitant. And every state party chair I've known has had to deal with internal strife and turmoil yeah. and people that don't like his leadership or he's not conservative enough or she's not conservative enough or I don't like the direction. That's OK. All right. You can have those opinions. You also have a pathway to replace that person. Yeah, it's I appreciate Dave uh, addressing uh, why you kick out the reporter straight away. I I understand that and I respect that, although I didn't think we need to make fun of her hair color. But who cares? That seems irrelevant (laughs) to me based on it. But okay, I I just I look at. Yeah, he's he's allowed to. He's allowed to. And that's why he made the decision. He defended his decision. Then, you know, a listener can decide whether or not they agree with it. I I really appreciate, though, that he came in and said, this is why we did it. This is my thinking. This is my thought process. I made the choice based on this. I think then it's fair to judge him based on the choice. And some people agree and some will disagree. But I appreciate the fact that he made the argument in that situation. While I would not have made the same choice. I can agree with him making the choice. I can see his rationalization, his reason for it. So yep. I can go, okay, I get it. I can understand why you made that choice. And I'm really not as upset about it at all as most people are. I, I just am like, okay, fine. I Okay. Yeah. I um And two, with regards to endorsements, um, this is, this yeah, is where the, too, the yeah. caveats I have on this. Okay. So most state party chairmen I know want to go out with the team they want to fight the Democrats. And every state party I knew worked typically quietly behind the scenes to kind of nudge a candidate in the right direction. Or maybe if they're having a conversation with a donor going, well, you know, candidate A, they could really win. Candidate B, not so much. Now, has the state party been on the nose about endorsing primary candidates the way they have in the past? No. And that's a fair critique. You could go, They shouldn't be sending out emails. They shouldn't be uh, pushing this on social media. They shouldn't be so clear in supporting a particular candidate in a primary. And that's a fair critique. If I was state party chairman, I think I'd probably be a little bit more neutral. But this idea that somehow uh, this is so shockingly new or so uh, horrific in the operations of the state party that the state party chairman has his or her favorites. They yeah. do. I guarantee you the Democrats are doing that right now. Oh, absolutely. And and I like your analogy of the coach and the idea of the starting lineup and the coach should be allowed to pick who they believe the starting lineup is, who those best players are. Uh, I think some of the pushback from the average voter is how early yeah. that starting list was released. <laughs> right, right. There, there's kind of this idea <laughs> that like, you know, and you see it in NBA, you know, you see it less in NFL. There's some rules around it, but you see NBA and in major league hockey and in, and in soccer as well, where there's kind of a game played about how late can I release my injury list and how late can I put out my starting lineup? Because then you don't know what I'm doing. The opponent yeah. doesn't. Right. But some people here, I think are saying, wait, you chose your starting lineup way before we even finished practice. Yeah. Is it fair? And fair I think that's a, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a fair critique. Yeah. But right? again, but he's but in he's charge. he's the chairman. <laughs> and he gets to make the choice. Yes, exactly. If you don't yeah. like it, there's a place to replace him. Exactly. Um, but uh, I, I appreciated that final part where he goes, even in CD5, if I don't win it, Congressional District 5. Sorry, I use yeah. internal political I know you do. language. Because yeah, that, that's uh, your world. Yeah, yeah. In Congressional District 5, Colorado Springs, where he's running as a primary, if he doesn't win, he'll get behind Jeff Crank or 
any of the other candidates. That, to me, I think that was the, the, the best part of the entire conversation because mm -hmm. I think it showed that Dave really is the team player. You may dislike the direction the coaching is going. You may be really excited about the way his coaching is going. But I really appreciated that as an unaffiliated voter that he will say, OK, if the party chooses someone other than me, I will still support the team. And that's fantastic because that's hard. And anybody that's played sports understands when you're not chosen to be on that starting lineup, there can be hurt feelings. Yep. And it's really difficult to sit on that bench and hope the people that played or achieved better than you are the ones that are going to achieve because there's part of you that thinks, I hope they fail so I get a shot. And I appreciate him saying, I'm going to support the team. We needed that. It, it I sit in a unique spot because I see um, the full breadth yeah. of the Republican Party and the conservative movement, and yeah. I generally like everybody involved with it. Yeah. There is a civil war going on right now. Yeah, you're you're Switzerland, pretty much. Um, and I and I'm I try to temper it down. Yeah. Where I go, okay, like when we had Dick Wadhams on, and yeah. Dick goes, and I go, Dick, what's the plan forward to win? And Dick goes, get rid of Dave Williams. And then when we host someone from you know, kind of the inner circle that has uh, control of the state party right now. And I go, well, how do we win? And they go, well, we got, we got to get rid of the rhinos and the Dick Wadhams and all that stuff. Yeah. And I just go, all right, well, I understand we're in a contentious primary and you're going to have a lot of emotion, but uh, guys, we win when we have more people on the bus. And would I like Dick Wadhams on the state party GOP bus after all this? Absolutely. And, and so I, 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 this is where I just kind of struggle through it all. I go, give Dave a chance. I know, I understand the frustration that comes on that side. I get it, guys. Let's, let's watch him and see how he plays. If the Republican Party in November is in a worse spot, we have less offices, less control, then by all means, you have every right to replace him and put somebody in at that point. But uh, look, uh, I think get through these primaries. If Dave Williams is willing to bury the hatchet and get together and go fight the Democrats post primary, then I expect that other side of the civil war to do the same as well. Yeah. I, I mean, he said say, on this show, he's willing yeah. to bury the hatchet and go fight Democrats. Do you, do you think that the people involved in the Civil War can do that? Do you think they can? Because you remember how difficult it was uh, during an antebellum and the Reconstruction phase in America. Yeah. How difficult? Because this has gotten very personal. I mean, there yeah, have been some right? personal attacks levied by people on both sides. How difficult is it to remake the Union? That or uh, Joe Biden continues to have bigger and bigger control in this country. Oh. That's got to be you've got to go to that can, at the end of the you, day. Can you give up your personal grudge for that? It's it's interesting. I think so it's I, I, look, I've, I've gone through that. I yeah. for a good portion of 2012, tried to do everything I could to stop Mitt Romney from becoming the Republican nominee. Yeah. And then joined the Romney team and did everything I could to stop the Obama train in, oh, wow. okay. in November of 2012. It, and it it takes it's not easy. It's not easy, especially no, when your heart and your emotions are into it. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard, which is part of that coalition building after you become the party nominee. Yeah, because the other people that threw their support. Did by you, someone else. Did you yeah. see Trump and uh, governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis? Oh, DeSantis? No, what? They were together doing a fundraiser. Hey, interesting. And Trump said to DeSantis, welcome back. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's hard. I mean, but, Ooh. you know. Oh, that's, that's difficult. That's and, the realities on the ground. Yeah. The issue, though, being is that the DeSantis supporters that heard that, does that persuade them to vote Trump or to choose another name on the ballot? And I'm not suggesting they choose Biden. I'm just suggesting they yeah. choose someone else or they just don't choose anybody. I think they'll come back in. Really? Um, give us a call, 303-696-1971. What did you think of Dave Williams' uh, comments? Do you support him through November? Has he done such a poor job, in, as Richard Holtorf believes, that he's got to be outed as chairman now? He should resign 
he shouldn't be endorsing candidates. He as publicly as he is that uh, we've got to uh, uh, replace him or has he been doing a, a decent job? We should see what he does in November. You're willing to get behind him. I will tell you the energy in that room down at the state assembly was very supportive of Dave. His yeah, people. I bet so. I bet so. His people. Well, they so, had to drive a long way, so I would assume. Yeah, right. it's, <laughs> so yes. they seem supportive. I'd love to hear from you. 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. Hey, folks, it's Jeff Hunt on behalf of the Colorado Farm Bureau. Whether you pulled out your skis or snowmobiles this last winter, it was a great year for winter fun. But the snow means even more to Colorado's agriculture. And I want you to know that our state parties, farmers and ranchers are doing their part to protect our future water resources. The people of Colorado agriculture continue improving the efficiency of their irrigation systems and adopting farming practices that help crops use less water to grow. They're planting drought resistance varieties and they're they are leading talks with the state policymakers about how to preserve water supplies when we have good years like this last one. My friends at the Colorado Farm Bureau are leaders in water conservation and water policy. They understand how to balance water for crops and water for families, and they're doing more with less. You can do your part. I recommend you join and become a member today. Go to coloradofarmbureau.com. That's coloradofarmbureau.com to join them. Uh, text messages coming in. A few people I spoke at the assembly felt that Dave Williams shouldn't be trying to do two jobs, that his distraction as a candidate would detract from his job as chairman. That was the uh, concern and complaint over um, Ken Buck, too, when Ken was trying to do both jobs. Uh, we kind of game planned this out yesterday. If Dave loses the primary, can he still do a good job of getting behind all the other candidates in the state of Colorado. At the end of the day, it's a really simple measurement on chairman. Do we have more Republicans in office because of his leadership or do we have fewer Republicans in office? And uh, based upon that, I think you judge the chairman. Um, DeSantis voters will not choose someone else on the ballot and risk Biden becoming president again. I agree. I think they'll come over and support Trump. I think they will. I'm not sure. And the only reason is because Trump keeps making statements to alienate them. That's the only thing. If he was more, hey, come on in. This is great. But the, you know, the welcome back kind of thing, saying that you were an outsider, it still creates that delineation. And his statement about Haley supporters, that if you donated for her, supported her, you're excommunicated from MAGA forever. I think that sticks with people longer. And you see this in campaigns and you've seen it. But it's always that gracious. I'm so excited to have you and I'm welcoming you. It's always about welcoming in yeah. those voters. That's not Trump. Trump has said, hey, you guys were still wrong and nice to see you again. I, I'm not certain that is going to be persuasive because the issue is in order for him to win, he needs all of those and some extra Biden voters because last time he didn't get enough people. So if he continues to alienate them, I'm questioning the math and his ability going forward to win this thing. Interesting text message here, 6858. The reason people at Assembly were so supportive of Dave is because the country club Republicans have given up on caucus system and don't show up or go anymore. You make that point. Case in point, uh, Maher and Wadhams uh, were not there either. Um, yeah, no, they were, they were uh, noticeably absent. And that's a heartbreaking part of all this. I was there when Bill Armstrong went down there to support my cop. Uh, Greg Brophy was down there, the energy, the fun, the excitement, uh, the, the Republican Party's in a civil war and it, it really bums me out. But um, Joan from Lakewood, I support Dave and I like his leadership. Thanks, Joan. Janice, we'll get to you in just a second. Let us know what you thought of that interview and what you think of Dave Williams' leadership of the state party. And are you ready to uh, post primary, even though it's going to be contentious, gear up and get behind the Republicans? Give us a call, 303-696-1971, 303-696-1971, or text us on the 710-KNUS app. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710-KNUS. At this hour in London, I'm Julia Chapman, and here are the top stories we're following. 
European officials are meeting to discuss a proposal on using profits from frozen Russian assets to buy weapons for Ukraine. It comes after the U.S. suggested raising debts and securing them against Russian assets. There are deep divisions in the West over how best to help support Ukraine in the longer term, with some European Union members worried about setting a precedent that leads investors to fear financial markets aren't secure. The Biden administration hopes to have an agreement by the time G7 leaders meet at their annual summit in June. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will visit Arizona today, just days after the state's top court reinstated a law from 1864, criminalizing and banning abortions in nearly all circumstances. Tony Waterman reports. Harris's team is calling this visit a fight for reproductive freedoms. And while on the ground in Tucson, she is expected to blast the state Supreme Court decision and blame former President Donald Trump. It is her second trip to Arizona in the span of a month, an indication of just how significant this battleground state is going to be to this year's elections. And that's what you need to know at this hour. I'm Julia Chapman in London on Salem News Channel.
All right, we just wrapped up a conversation with the chairman of the Colorado Republican Party, Dave Williams, who's also a candidate for Congressional District 5. Taking your calls on what you think of his leadership and his responses to the questions, we asked him directly about removing the reporter. We asked him about the FEC complaint by Kelly Maher, and we asked him uh, to respond to Richard Holtorf calling for him to resign. And he, to his credit, took on every single one of those issues and provided his response. Now, the, the question is to you, do you agree with his response? Do you agree with his thinking? Do you agree with his leadership? Or do you disagree with him and why? Give us a call, 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971 or text us on the 710 KNUS app. Janice Walsenberg, you're on the Jeff and Bill Show News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Yeah, I agree uh, with Dave Williams. It was, uh, I think these people are picking uh, issues that should not be relevant right now because we need to win. And uh, we can, we've been playing by those old rules and they haven't worked. Janice, what do you think about the state party so openly endorsing candidates in a primary? That That is something that's relatively new. Like I said previously, um, previous chairmen have kind of nudged particular candidates in a, in a way to get the team they want to go fight with. But uh, do you support the state party like in Congressional District 4, where you've got good Republicans, Deborah Flora, Jerry Sonnenberg, um, uh, uh, Richard Holtorf, and then uh, Lauren Boebert. Do you support them being so open in endorsing Lauren Boebert? Yes, I am, because she came from our District 3. Uh, but uh, I was listening to that woman the other day uh, outlining the voting records of uh, Boebert and Holtorf, and I was quite quite amazed at how it came up on Holtorf. So. I was kind of liking him, but I don't so much now. And should you just in the primary vote for Lauren and, and let the state party remain neutral? Why is it important for the state party to be so on the nose with who they're endorsing? Why, why can't they just allow the primary to play itself out? Well, they've been sitting up there analyzing these people and what they've been doing for the party how they've been voting and what they're supporting. And it looks like they're doing a good job for the party, us, uh, common voters down here. So I'm all for what, who they endorse. I don't see any objections so far. Right. And I do like Dave Williams. I think he ran a good program. I uh, followed the last election, the last assembly. It was a kind of a debacle. And uh, I like what's going on. It was a little slow on the voting, like you said, uh, that uh, we're going to have to do something about the voting time limit. But And also, I was uh, they asked, uh, who's here carrying? And I had to be sitting up in the nosebleed section, and I was sitting around the safest place, and there was a lot of people <laughs> had, were carrying. Good to see. That is. That mm -hmm. is Janice from Walsenberg. I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. 303-696-1971. Her line is open now. 303-696-1971. We'll get to Jim in Denver in just a second. Text message here, 1193. I support Dave Williams, and I like the way he always speaks calmly, sensibly, and without yelling or getting all riled up. Make America great again. No more compromising weak Republicans. 1193. Let us know where you're from. I'd like to know that when you text in as well. Let's go to Jim in Denver. Jim, you're on the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I just wanted to comment on something that Dave Williams said while we were he was interviewing. Yeah. Um, and I quote this from his interview. He was saying, without the assembly, there's no need for a political party. And my first thought is, what about having shared values and getting people elected to office? Um, it just seems like such a short side of view from someone who's a chairman. Yeah. So uh, I think his worldview and his position is that these open primaries that we have in Colorado, where people can just kind of petition on, right? So they can claim to be a Republican, go out there and get the petitions. They don't have to go through the assembly process. They don't have to necessarily meet directly with their, uh, with Republican primary voters. 
uh, creates a system where, you know, what's the, even the point of having a Republican Party? Because you can have somebody that doesn't share the values of the Republican Party at all get on the ballot as a Republican. No, I hear you, but I feel like with petitions, it's it's just and assembly, the whole process to get people on the ballot and petitions still need to be signed by people who are Republicans, right? You can't have independents or Democrats sign it. So in another way, these are just two different worldviews of grassroots. You can have the grassroots support of you got your people through the counties and you got your signatures, or you went through the assembly and you went through, you know, the more establishment way. But I feel like a majority of people see both options as grassroots just different paths to get there onto the ballot and i feel like it's just a bit unfair that um someone like dave williams is calling out the process because he's just not liking the candidates who are doing either one both or either jim that's fair uh jim what do, what do you think ultimately results in wins for republicans uh, this is a critique of the assembly process that uh, the people that actually vote, right? When you get out there, uh, your neighbors, those that aren't active in the Republican Party, uh, those that uh, are, are just traditional, you know, primary voters, but um, don't get as into it as as some others do. Uh, they're the ones that ultimately matter. So we should be spending time with them, not necessarily just talking to an inner club. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? A hundred percent agree. And I feel like sometimes the assembly process can feel like that. It feels like this, you know, exclusive club. I think what, to answer your question about what does it take to be winning or what is the definition is how do we get people um, more to come to our side, right? Like uh, I'm tired of seeing uh, so many people who were Republicans just kind of shy away from the idea of ever telling anybody. Um, so many people who are scared to say they're Republicans. I think winning is getting more people to be open about it and winning. And and this kind of brings me, I want to bring back to another point you said about like, let's give him a try. Let's see what happens in November. Uh, maybe his methods work, but we're already at such a small share of the, of the legislative side, our house district. We're such a small part of the Colorado parties or of the, the electorate now that it, it doesn't seem worth the risk to go so far into saying, let's see what this guy's radical ideas are going to do if they're winning or not, because that's a huge risk. We're already like one third, one fourth of the state. Jim, I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Jim's line is going to be open 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. Let's go to Mike in Littleton real quick. Mike, you're on the Jeff and Bill show. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, I'm, I told Bill I'm going to be a little cynical here. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I heard Dave Williams uh, call. And, um, you know, at this point, I I've been through everything from Dan Mays, yeah. um, <laughs> Ryan Call, uh, the leadership of Christy Burton Brown. It it's an it, the, the Republican Party in Colorado, to be cynical, is a nonstop drama. Um, and the, the, the candidates we field, we, we can't even beat Michael Bennett. Um, anyways. So it, basically what it's done for me is turned me off totally hmm. to participating in any kind of Republican process. I don't know how people continue to do it, um, you know, and, uh, and and I just think it's going to continue. This is a continuation of the Republican Party drama that's been going on for at least, what, 10 years or oh, more? Yeah, and you didn't even mention there was a whole bunch of other chairmen in between those names, too. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff from down in Colorado Springs at one point, And then, uh, uh, yeah, and some of them have even left the state and moved on. Uh, no, I. it is. It's a lot. Of, it's almost like a soap opera. Um, there's a lot of drama yeah. in there. But now it, part of it is the way that the parties are just uh, a little different. So in Colorado, you have essentially four billionaires that control the entire party. Um, they came in and said, look, this is the way it's going to be. This is who we're going to put in this particular seat. This is going to be the top issue. And since we write everybody's checks, you're going to listen to us or you're not going to have a role in the party. Republicans aren't like that. One, we don't have nearly the amount of money and financial support, but we also don't have that top down uh, push that, that comes like the Democrats do. And so naturally, there's a little bit more of a principled infighting that takes place. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I, I guess it's up to the ultimately up to the voters to, to, to vote yay or nay for these uh, either Republicans or Democrats. You know, for me, Jeff, 
I, I want a Republican. I want somebody to to be loud and proud. I stand for this. I'm going to Washington. I will do this. I'm going to the governor's mansion. Yeah, um, I, I will focus on these issues. I will, you know, balance the budget. You just, it's just a bunch of waffling back and forth um, on, you know, what I might do, what, and, and what you just, I, I don't feel that there's anybody worth choosing, at least on the Republican side. I would not vote for the Democrats. They're just too radical. And so it's driven me to, uh, you know, look third party. Um, Interesting. You know, it just, yeah, it's just so anyways, that, that's my cynical approach. And thanks for the <laughs> I time. appreciate the call. Mike from Littleton. Thanks so much. We'll continue with these calls and texts. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
All right, coming up next is Jennifer Say. She's the founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics. She used to be with Levi Strauss, and she's now partnered with Riley Gaines on this new athletic so outfit cool. opportunity. So you're going to hear more about it. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS. Nine a.m. in the Mile High City. Good morning, Denver, Colorado. It is Friday, April twelfth. I'm your co-host Jeff Hunt, along with Bill Thorpe, bringing morning. you the freshest insights, hottest takes from the right, left, center, and crazy. It's going to be a beautiful day in Denver. By the way, it's the Colorado March for Life. So, if you want, you can join me right down after this show down at the uh, Colorado State Capitol and join us for a great fun celebration of the sanctity of life taking place down there. We're going to dive into a whole nother hour of engaging discussions, critical analysis, most importantly, your calls and texts, because this is where Denver's voice is heard loud and clear. So add one more cup of coffee to your day, Denver, and let's dive into the issues that matter most to you right here, right now. Coming up in just a second is Jennifer Say. She's the founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics. Say began working at Levi Strauss and Company in 1999, rising to chief marketing officer and then brand president. She was named one of Billboard's most powerful people in music and fashion in 2016 and twice named the Forbes most influential CMO list in 2019 and 2020. 
Starting in 2020, she risked her reputation, community, and friendships to speak up against the harm being done to children due to the extended closure of San Francisco's public schools. She resigned from Levi's in 2022 and has been focused on her own writing and filmmaking projects since then. She has a documentary film and post-production called Generation COVID about the harms to children from prolonged school closures. And now she's launched her own brand, XXXY Athletics. She's a mother of four and lives right here in Denver. So we're going to get to her in just a second after the news with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Morning, Jeff. 46 and sunny in Denver, expecting highs in the upper 70s today with plenty of sunshine. The 7 10 5 day forecast is coming up. Our top story GOP chair Dave Williams on with Jeff and Bill this morning, answering Richard Holtorf's criticism of the GOP endorsing candidates. And of course, it does it once again, but I'm going to wait for it to reset and we will hear from Dave Williams. Well, we, we had a bylaw change. Uh, this was last year back in September. We made it clear that we wanted to favor assembly candidates, those who go through the assembly and make the ballot through assembly. We wanted to favor them because we're getting tired of petition candidates spending millions of dollars to get onto the ballot uh, while snubbing you know, the very grassroots folks that dedicate their time, energy, and resources to the assembly and convention. He says the Colorado GOP is focused simply on one thing, defeating the corrupt left. Angry parents in Littleton Public Schools calling for the resignation of district leadership. Dozens of parents packed the school board room Thursday for the first time since the video of the school bus aide abusing a nonverbal student with autism was released. Blake McBride, a parent who was told that his child had been abused, called for Superintendent Todd Lambert's resignation. Former Aurora police officer John Arbear, accused of pistol whipping a man, has been found not guilty. It happened in 2021, and the trial began last week. Aurora dentist James Craig, who's been charged with first-degree murder in the poisoning death of his wife, now faces new felony charges, tampering with evidence. He tried to persuade a family member to tamper with evidence starting the day before he was arrested. Stephen Tubbs was all over this story. These additional charges haven't been official because the judge hasn't, you know, kind of tacked them on yet, but it is just another sickening uh, portion and saga of this story. Stephen and Billy were actually patients of Craig. Arapaho County Sheriff's looking for a driver of a purple Dodge Challenger who ran from deputies, knocked over a pump a at a Centennial gas station and uh, driving recklessly at speeds over 100 miles an hour. Anyone with info, please call Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. Representative Don Wilson has apologized for leaving a 9 millimeter Glock in the bathroom of the state capitol. A janitor found the loaded gun. State law prohibits guns in the Capitol. House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Trump set to make an appearance together at Mar-a-Lago today. They're slated to hold a press conference focused on election integrity. New research research estimates uh, estimates that uh, President Biden's new student debt a relief plan will cost taxpayers around $84 billion. What a deal. They will be forgiving almost $7.5 billion in student loan debt. 43 in Arvada, 45 in Littleton, 46 in Denver. The DU Pioneers headed to the Frozen Four Championship tomorrow after a 2-1 overtime thriller against Boston U. The Avs play host to Winnipeg tomorrow. Tiger Woods uh, finished the first round this morning. He's at one over. They will continue the second round today. Bryson DeChambeau sits atop the leaderboard. Weather and darkness suspended the first round until this morning. Nuggets at the Spurs tonight. Rockies at Toronto at 5 o'clock. And let's uh, take you out with a positive here on Friday. Uh, this one was great this week. Trump at a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta. And this young woman says, forget the media. I don't care what 
the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. We support you, Mike. Okay, 4 p.m. We're doing 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a We support you, Mike. The award-winning Jeff and Bill show continues on Friday. Blake Olson, News Talk 710, KNUS. The 710 five-day forecast calls for a strong ridge of high pressure to develop, bringing beautiful spring weather to Denver in the front range through the weekend. Enjoy. Temperatures today, Saturday and Sunday will be in the 70s, overnight lows 40s through Sunday dry. Monday will continue to be mild, low 70s, afternoon showers, and even some thunder possible late Monday afternoon and evening. Then Monday night and Tuesday, trending cooler with developing showers. Meteorologist Don Day on 710 KNUS. All right, joining us on the Jeff and Bill show is the founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics, Jennifer Say. Jennifer was formerly with Levi Strauss, rising to chief marketing officer and then brand president, but she risked it all when she went to go fight for the rights of kids to be able to attend school in person in 2020. She's now launched her new brand. Thanks so much for being on the Jeff and Bill show, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about the the reason for launching this brand. What is XXXY Athletics all about? Well, the reason is I looked around at all of the athletic brands that pretend or claim to champion women athletes, female athletes, and not one has taken a stand to protect women's sports and spaces and keep women's sports female. And I thought, what an amazing opportunity for us, you know, to position ourselves in a really unique way. 80% of Americans agree with us. It's a very large audience. Um, I know how to build a brand. I know how to make outstanding products. This is not a gimmick. We're in this for the long haul. I want to make world la- world-class products um, that appeals to the vast majority of Americans. And it really combines everything I've ever done in my life. You know, having this idea was like a light bulb moment. I was an elite gymnast as a child. I was the first elite athlete in gymnastics to speak out about the abuse in my own sport. Um, I was abused for that for 10 years, you know, called every name in the book, but eventually was proven to be correct. And so, you know, it combines my athletic background, my brand building experience, and my sort of penchant for speaking inconvenient truths. And it just felt like, gosh, I have to do this. No one's doing it. And I'm the person to do it. And what's the response been from some of your colleagues? I know you've been through a lot, right? So in like 2020, you started to push back on San Francisco public schools, uh, con- continuing to keep kids out of and and do online school. But you've uh, so you have this track record of uh, being of speaking your mind. Um, what what has been your colleagues' response to the idea of launching a brand to support women? Well, I should first say that the public's response has been incredibly positive. You know, the sales are, you know, more than twice what we expected. We're a little low on product right now. People go visit the site, which you can do at the truthfits.com. Um, but we'll be back in stock early next week. So sign up for emails and we'll let you know when we're back in stock. So the, the selling has been through the roof and the feedback on the product has been outstanding as well. Very high quality, very soft cotton. Um, you know, all of these great fit, all of that. And and I've heard uh, privately from folks in the industry who have said, you know, right on, this needs to be done. I think people are still afraid to speak out on this subject, even though it is just common sense that, you know, men's and women's bodies are different. They all have a physical advantage in sports. In fact, it's the single biggest determinant of athletic performance. And people are still afraid to say it. So many of my colleagues, and when I say colleagues, I mean sort of fellow industry professionals, have reached out to me privately, but not quite willing, most of them, to say it publicly. But that's the point of the brand, is we want to normalize standing up for women and girls and protecting uh, female spaces. Because most people agree, as I said, but they're too afraid of being smeared as a bigot. But if we do it together, we can't lose. Talking with Jennifer Say, who's the founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics. Why do you think the fashion industry is afraid to step up and and speak truth about about women and men, and especially protecting women's sports? 
you know, it's just crazy. The world is kind of upside down. Five years ago, it would have been perfectly okay to say, you know, male and female bodies are different, men are stronger and faster. But now, for some reason, because of a very small minority of uh, very loud bullying activists, it's, it, it, it's not enough just to say, and, you know, we can debate this as a separate issue. It's not enough just to say that, you know, gender dysphoria exists. We have to say that trans women are women, that there is no distinction, uh, which is false. That is a lie. <laughs> and so that's the lie that underpins this push to allow, you know, trans women, male body athletes into women's sports. And what really scares me is that if you kind of follow this through to its conclusion, there would be no sex-based category. Because what, what we're saying is there's no difference. So everyone should compete together. If there's no sex-based categories, there's no women's sports, women cease to compete. They cease to have the opportunity to win. They cease to have access to all of the benefits that come from competing in sports. So I feel it's really urgent to stand up on this matter and get that 80% to come out of the closet, so to speak, and stand with us. So that's what I'm trying to do is like normalize standing up and saying, no, not our sports and spaces. You got some great products there. I just ordered two hats for my wife and my daughter um, that say that have the green woman across the top of oh, it. I, I really think that's great. Um, and and encouraging women to be proud to be women and that yeah. their bodies are different and, and that their experience of sports is different. Now, during this last NCAA basketball championship, women's championship was viewed more than the men's championship Amazing. was. Yeah. yeah. What, what, tell us where you think that changes. Well, I should start by saying I'm not a huge uh, basketball fan. I've had periods in my life where I've watched it a lot, and I did watch um, some of these uh, women's NCAA final games. I think, I think that you know, media organizations like ESPN, I think the NCAA, I think they've all undervalued female athletes and the draw of female athletes. And I think when it's put out there and you have outstanding players. Um, it, it's a huge draw. I'm betting on the power of female athletes. I've always believed in it. You know, my sport, gymnastics, is the women's gymnastics is the number one sport watched in the Summer Olympics and has been for decades. It's entertaining. It's awe inspiring. You know, to watch Simone Biles is to see an actual human fly, you know. And so I just think we've all underestimated the power and the draw of female athletes. And Caitlin Clark has kind of proven everyone wrong. It's exciting. Her style of play is exciting. Um, sometimes it gets a little boring to watch the men. You know, when you have, you know, seven foot four athletes just standing under the basket, not even having to jump to get it in. That's not really that exciting. But watching Caitlin pass and hit three pointers is a it's a very exciting game. And I think she's proven that female athletes are a big, big draw. The audience, I, I think in the finals for ESPN was the largest basketball audience ESPN had ever drawn. That's my understanding. They beat larger the men. than men's NCAA. Yeah, not yeah. just men's NCAA, but it was yep. larger than any NBA game. Um, the yep. audience, I think at its peak was like 17 and a half million or something. So, you know, I think it's all really positive for women's sports. And like I said, we're betting on the power of female athletes as well as high quality product. And, um, I, you know, I think, you know, we got to coax people out to say what they think. They, they're they afraid of being called bigots. They will be, but it's a silly um, insult. It's a ridiculous insult. It's compassionate to stand up for women and girls. And we want to encourage people to do that. Jennifer Say, founder of founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics, speaking with Jeff and Bill. Uh, Jennifer, Bill Thorpe here. And I want to follow up on the, I would say the opportunity for sports broadcasters to look at women's athletics. And I want to reinforce, I believe you're exactly right, that they discounted the number of people that wanted to watch women's athletics because they discounted the number of the women. Uh, we have 50% of population right. is women, and there are a lot of daughters, nieces, and grand uh, granddaughters that are playing athletics and coming up through middle school, high school, and even at the college level. Chances yeah. are someone is connected to a female athlete in their lives, yeah. and those female athletes are searching for their role models They're, they can look at yeah. the Michael Jordans and the LeBron James and they can see, but when they see a Caitlin Clark on the floor, they can imagine them lacing up those shoes. They can go out there. And then when they are playing in the, in the, uh, they're playing in their driveway. They're not pretending to be Kobe Bryant. In the last three seconds, the NBA championship, they're pretending to be Caitlin Clark. 
in the last three seconds of the NCAA championships or the WNBA championships. It's giving them yeah. someone to look up to and they can see themselves. Also, it gives them something to achieve. And the, the women athletes that I know love to watch people in their sport, especially women compete in that sport. Yeah. And because they put themselves in it, it's the same reason that all the former high school football players sit on the NFL and sit on the, sit on the couch, watch mm -hmm. the NFL and then turn to their buddy and say, you know, if it wasn't for this bum knee, I could have gone pro <laughs> same thing. Same right. thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, I would, you know, the, the, the number of girls and women that participate in sports, you know, all prompted by title nine back in 1972. I mean, it's thousands fold more than it was back in 1972. I started gymnastics just a few years after title nine was established. There weren't a ton of sports for girls to play back then. And I'm really thrilled that my seven year old daughter has more options than I had. I mean, I love gymnastics, but there weren't other options for me really in 1974, you know, and I was enthralled with gymnastics. There was Nadia, et cetera. But what's so cool now is you're totally right. Everybody knows a little girl, a young woman, an adolescent participating in sports. They're engaged. But here's what I would argue based on the NCAA viewership. Guys are intrigued too. Guys are watching yeah. too. That's not just a female audience. And why shouldn't they? Women have watched men's sports for a long time. Why can't guys watch a, you know, a great female athlete? So I think you know, this round of NCAA finals, women's finals has just proven that there is a huge draw. And I would say, you know, many of the collegiate um, NIL athletes that are making the most money from sponsors are female as well. So I think that's another proof point um, that women can attract an audience, that women can build brands, that uh, that female athletes are a real draw uh, for, for sponsorship dollars, um, for viewership all of it so you know you look at someone like Libby Dunn a gymnast I think is one of the highest um highest paid NIL collegiate athlete so another proof point there yeah I think that uh, many times the female athletics um lean more into the strategy rather than the athleticism and I think that's what fans of the sport regardless of if they're yeah. male or female really enjoy. And I, I really appreciate you bringing up the title nine because I had a conversation with my kids and, you know, uh, you know, growing up as we're older, uh, the, the generations mm -hmm. that we have that are young right now, middle school, high schoolers, early college, they're more open and accepting than any other generation we's, we've ever seen. And my kids pushed back on me on the issue that I did not support transgender athletes in female sports and they got really mad at me and I had to walk them down the path that you and I walked yeah. down where there were no female sports. And I'm like, listen, right. I watch the women that are in my life fight tooth and nail just to be able to get a team. And now we're trying to replace the opportunities for those women with another person. Uh, I'm not saying that transgender athletes can't compete. I'm just saying not in sports in which the biology makes a difference against women. It doesn't make any sense because I was there during the fight and I see this yeah. being a losing fight. I just, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, just a couple of days ago, earlier this week, um, the organization that governs intramural sports, the NAIA, I think it's called, I'm not totally sure what it stands for, but they govern, you know, collegiate intramural sports. Um, they made the decision and announced it publicly that, um, the, that women's intramural sports would be female only because of everything you and I have discussed and that the men's category would officially be open to anyone. That's so, great. you know, that is the solution. So the men's category is open. Anyone can compete. Males can compete. Females can compete. Um, trans, um, trans athletes can compete, but women's because of everything we've said, and I would add safety to the mix oh, yeah. here, yep. especially in That's the kind of one. contact sports. And I, when I say contact sports, I'm not even talking about this boxing, which crazily enough, U.S. boxing has said uh, trans identified male athletes can't compete in women's yeah, boxing. I'm talking, about bas I'm talking about basketball, volleyball. There have been many examples of high school athletes being injured in these sports because let's face it, there is a lot of contact in these sports. Rugby is another example. So I think the intramural D league made the right decision. I would like for the NCAA and the US OPC to follow suit, but you know, they have not yet. Yeah, I've I played in co ed soccer leagues and these aren't like in fifth and sixth grade. I'm talking post college co-ed soccer yeah. leagues, people that were all Americans and college soccer yeah. players, uh, people that were all conference and people that were on the U.S. Olympic team played in 
uh, you know, in indoor systems yeah. that were co-ed. And I love the idea of the open because I still have told Jeff and I've told the listener that there was the, the women's goalkeeper in, at my college. I would take her any day of the week. She's one of the top three goalkeepers I ever played with. And she was our goalkeeper on the co-ed teams. She held her own. She could compete. But placing me on the field with only female athletes would have given yeah. me a huge advantage over everybody else. It wouldn't have been equal. She could compete with everyone else, but it's not necessarily fair the other way around. Yeah. I mean, you take one exception and that does not make the rule. You know, the, the activists keep saying, you know, why would you punish such a small minority of the population? And I would argue, why would you punish 50% of the population by not allowing them a fair fight, by not allowing them equal opportunity to make the team and uh, to compete and to win? We're talking about, you know, protecting women and girls and giving them the equal opportunity. And there's over 600 examples of, you know, male body trans identified athletes competing in women's sports and winning, taking scholarship money, taking sponsorship dollars, taking trophies. So, you know, to me, that's not a small number, 600 examples, and it will keep growing. And in every instance, that athlete who won within the women's category was a very average at best competitor in the men's category. Their leap forward in terms of their ranking is proof positive that it is unfair, that it is, it's not because of hard work. Nobody jumps forward 400 spaces like Leah Thomas did because they worked really hard for nine months. It just doesn't happen. You might move forward eight spaces. You know, I, as a gymnast, I move forward seven spaces in one year's time. Fine. That's believable. 400 spaces? I don't think so. There's obviously an unfair advantage there. And you don't, it insults our intelligence to say, well, you're not a doctor. You don't understand. I don't need to be a doctor. This was common knowledge five years ago that there was a reason for having sex-based categories in sports. It's only now that we've completely lost our minds and that we're being asked to further lies in service of an ideology. Talking with Jennifer Say, founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics. Uh, speaking of Leah Thomas, uh, some of the pictures here on your website include friend of the program, Riley Gaines. Uh, tell us her role. Is she just a model or um, have you partnered with her in some capacity? She's an ambassador. So, you know, she's modeled the clothing. She really is the face of this movement in a sense. You know, she's been very brave. She stood up. She competed um, against Leah Thomas, you know, someone she was confused. She'd never heard of this person. And suddenly they surged ahead in the rankings. And, and she tied um, for fifth place at, at the NCAA finals in, I think, 2022, if I'm not mistaken, um, and was told she needed to stand down and not accept the trophy. You know, I, women were forsaken in this moment for a woke photo op. The NCAA, you know, told her, told women to shut up, stand down and step aside for this other person. And, you know, in the moment she went along and I think after, I don't know that she had a choice in the moment, but after she gathered herself and she said, this is not fair. This is not right. I'm going to stand up and speak on behalf of women and those who are too afraid to say it. So we just felt, um, you know, we needed to work work with Riley because she's been the face of this movement. So she's certainly a model in the campaign. She's a partner. We've got more cool stuff hopefully coming with her. And we've also worked, we are also working with Paula Scanlon, who is another, I would say, leader in this movement. And I think her voice is really important. She competed on the UPenn team with Leah Thomas. She is a rape survivor, a sexual assault survivor. When she was only 16, she was assaulted and she was very uncomfortable being in the locker room with a biological male. When she expressed this to the university, they told her, go away, be quiet. Um, you need to get some therapy and some help so that you can accept this. And so she's been very outspoken on that particular aspect of this. And I think she's incredibly brave to, to do so. She was told by the university, you can't say anything publicly, you'll never get a job. I mean, she was bullied and intimidated, and she stood up and did it anyway. And, and that's the thing, everybody's afraid of that kind of bullying, of that kind of name calling. But you have to learn to brush it aside because it's a lie. Talking with Jennifer Say, founder and CEO of XXXY Athletics, formerly with Levi Strauss, rising to chief marketing officer and then brand president. She's now launched her new athletic line, Standing with Women, 
Go to xx-xyathletics.com. You can see all the great material there. I just purchased some hats for my wife and my daughter. They've got men's athletics wear as well. Look, as conservatives, where we spend our dollar matters. You want to get behind and support organizations that are standing for what's right. Jennifer, I appreciate you so much for doing that and for launching this athletic where and joining our show today. We really appreciate it. Thanks. And thanks for buying the hats and everybody go check out the site and there's lots more product coming soon. This is just the first drop. So stay tuned, sign up for email and we'll let you know when new stuff comes in. Thank you for having me. I love it. We've got to stand behind girls that are competing in those sports for their safety, for what's right, for the truth. And uh, again, Jennifer say with XXXY athletics, if you go to XX dash XY athletics.com, that uh, has to do with the, um, uh, what is it called? The XXXY? Chromosomes. Chromosomes. Yep. That's right. Yep. That's right. I was not good in sciences. <laughs> uh, that'll get a lot of text messages. People are going to be like, yeah, clearly. Um, I'm so glad Jennifer was on. That was really cool. I, I've uh, a lot of friends. Uh, I was an athlete all through high school, uh, a little bit of college as well. And so um, you have a lot of friends that are female athletes. And when you uh, see that they're, you see how hard they work how committed yeah. they are to the sport, how it becomes yeah, a, a big priority in their lives. And That's then just watch a dude come in and be like, I take yeah. your scholarship. The thing for Sit me, down. The thing for me is it's just the biological differences. And, right. and we get into that all the time with the transgender questions. <laughs> and, and most of the time we are on the, on the opposite side of this one. But in this one, I, I, it absolutely makes sense because of the biological advantage that men have. It's yep. science and putting them on the field court, uh, whatever, in that type of physical contest with a female biologically is just simply not fair because they're not competing at the same level. Uh, for me, an example would be, let's say that we just pick one Major League Baseball team and that Major League Baseball team gets free steroids. No steroids for anybody else. <laughs> What's going to happen? Yep. What do you think's going to happen? Same thing here. Same thing. Imagine effortlessly gliding open your cabinets and drawers to reveal neatly arranged shelves that showcase your belongings. With roll them out shelves, you'll easily access your pots, pans, and other essentials, eliminating chaos and increasing speed and functionality in your home. Roll them out shelves understands that everyone's home storage needs are unique. Whether you're dealing with tight corners or expansive cabinets, your shelves will be custom built to maximize every inch of available space. Joyce and Brent Tolliver, the mom and son dynamic duo, Leave satisfied customers wherever they go, and their all five-star reviews confirm this. Here's what some overjoyed customers have said. The quality of the products are excellent. The quality of the labor installation is outstanding. The customer service is unsurpassed. I highly recommend roll out shelves. They are very good listeners, and they have great suggestions for cabinetry solutions. This is a top-notch company. Excellent product, excellent service, and installation. Begin the affordable transformation in your home for less than a thousand dollars. When Roll Em Out Shelves efficiently organizes your space with sturdy Baltic birch shelves built right here in Colorado and guaranteed for life. Call for your free in home estimate today 303 475 9601. 303 475 9601 or rollemoutshelves.com. Be sure to tell them Jeff sent you. Rollemoutshelves.com. Let's go to Jill and Aurora. Jill, you're on the Jeff and Bill Show, News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning. Morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm just calling in because I uh, completely disagree with uh, the stance of, of Dave Williams and what's been going on. Yep. Uh, I have been an activist since I was 14 and I'm nearly 60. Uh, and oh, I have you. never missed a primary. I have never missed uh, an assembly. And this year I chose not to attend the assembly. But Ooh, part of that is because I don't trust Dave Williams. Dave Williams has deep connections to China through the through his uh, the work that he did with his in-laws. That was documented from Sean Boyd on Channel 4 News. Great piece against Dave Williams. Uh, and I just don't trust him. I think that he's a, um, not an honorable individual. He was fired as an as a volunteer for the Trump uh, organiz uh, as a volunteer for the Trump campaign organization. I don't know exactly what it was. You know, he took money. I mean, he was using state party resources 
to send out his blast that he was running for CD5. Yeah. That is absolutely unacceptable. He should not be using the state party resources uh, for his CD5. In addition, I absolutely do not believe that the state party should be putting their hand and their foot on the scale of any primary. And supporting Lauren Boebert uh, is just unconscionable with her antics, getting caught on her lewd behavior, getting caught on camera, then lying about it, saying, oh, I wasn't vaping, and then saying, don't you know who I am? I believe that her family needs her more than CD4. I believe that her boys are crying out for help. They're crying for her attention. Who's parenting her when she's in D.C. and she's on the campaign trail? And for them to endorse her when we have so many fantastic other candidates that haven't been arrested, that haven't been involved in domestic violence and et cetera. And I just don't believe that it's the role of the state party to uh, to influence the primary. And here's an example of Dave Williams saying, hey, I'm a unifier. I'm going to bring people together. I posted something on the Colorado GOP uh, X signal or, you know, X account that just my opinion that the no state party should ever be putting their hand and their foot mm -hmm. on the scale. And their reply to me, and I kid you not, was go cry more. I actually, an hour later, I got an email from Life Lurk from LifeLock alert that I had cyberbullying going on on my ex account. The, the Colorado GOP was the only one who was snarky and nasty and rude in any response that I had on my ex account. So it goes back directly to the Colorado wow. GOP. Jill, can I ask a, a few questions? I really appreciate yeah. your perspective. Thank you for calling in and being so patient today. Um, who do you think would do a good job as chair? man or woman of the GOP or who in the past do you think did a good job? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I can't name anybody off the top of my head, you know, right now that that would be in the running. Um, you know, I think that, I, I mean, I'm the type that, you know, I'm a bulldog and when I go for somebody, I'm going to go for them. And then all of a sudden I find out later on, you know, Oh, wow. Something was uh, amiss with that. You know, we, we all supported Ryan call. We thought he was great. And then, he becomes, you know, a knucklehead and, you know, has his law license revoked and whatever else. Um, you know, I, I don't, in the past, um, I liked, I liked um, Dick Wadham. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of him because he doesn't believe in the, the Trump stuff, you know, and that the election was stolen. So, but I did like Dick, Dick Wadhams and what Dick Wadhams did for, for the state. If Dave Williams is victorious in getting more Republicans elected in November, right? So uh, we go through all this and there's more Republicans in state house, state Senate seats. Maybe we don't win statewide. Trump doesn't win, but we end up with more Republicans in leadership uh, because of his vision. Would you continue to, or would you uh, consider supporting him for continued leadership or is the personal stuff that important to you? The personal stuff is, is pretty important. Yes, I believe that wins and losses is absolutely important. Absolutely. But that's only one piece of the criteria. And, you know, the, the connections that Dave Williams has to China and, um, you know, the other shenanigans that he's pulled, um, I just can't, that, that's a really um, strong character flaw that I think is significant. Um, but it's just the, the wins and losses, you know, coming up the next election are significant, but they're one piece of, of the criteria for determining, you know, good or bad. How about CD4? Who are you supporting in Congressional District 4? Um, I am, am really strongly leaning towards um, Deborah Flora. Um, she's bright. She's articulate. She is grit. She is grace. And she doesn't bring drama. You know, I love I saw something recently and it said she's about solutions, not about celebrity. Um, and I think that she's just, you know, she's put out her I've read through her plan and I think it's fantastic. She has some amazing ideas for getting us back on the right track. You know, she's been to the border. spent a, I think it was like a week down at the border, knowing the, the problems and the issues and how do we go about solving that? those kinds of things. And that is significant. And she's not about the drama. She's, you know, she, she brings a strong moral character, a steel spine. And like I said, grit, grit and grace. And I think that that's important. I think Deborah went down with, when she was a host with 710K in US. By the way, we got yes, an award yes. for that. So uh, Mark Crowley, Fantastic. hat tip to Matt, Mark Crowley. Jill, thanks so much for the call. She's been very patient waiting. Yeah, thanks, um, Jill. 
Her line will be open 303-696-1971, 303-696-1971. At the top of the 8 o'clock hour, we interviewed Dave Williams. He took on all of the things we asked he him. did. That was a really good conversation because many times you get the tap dancing, but he addressed everything very directly. And I appreciate that. We got some people that agree with him and disagree with him, both in calls and text, but I appreciate his forthrightness. So one of the interesting questions, um, maybe we were talking earlier about the idea of the head coach picking the starting lineup. Got an interesting text, uh, someone saying, yeah, but does the head coach pick themselves as the quarterback or pick themselves no. as the starting wide receiver? And <laughs> right? like, yeah, that's a good point. No. That's a good thing to throw in there that is the idea that does that affect how you're setting that starting lineup up if you also want to play in the game. But that, that's a really interesting perspective on that one. And, and I appreciate it. Jill's call. And I like the fact that Deb Flora is getting some traction. That's interesting. And I, I was curious to see how Deb was going to navigate and stake out her territory in that primary. And so far, the things that I'm reading, things that I'm hearing, she's doing a wonderful job. And again, you know, friend of the show and friend of the station. So yeah, okay. and, and if someone wants to challenge Dave to the leadership of the state party, you could absolutely just say, I'm going to return the state party to be neutral. I think that uh, in all primaries and and that's going to be my leadership and we're going to get the, back to that. You you have every right to be able to promote that. Um, Dave has decided he's going to be a lot more open about picking uh, who he wants to have uh, as a as the state party and who the state party supports going into the primary. So uh, we'll continue with your calls and texts. They're coming in right now. 303-696-1971, 303-696-1971, or text us on the 710KNUS app. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill show. News Talk 710KNUS. At this hour in London, I'm Julia Chapman, and here are the top stories we're following. The FBI is warning of a possible coordinated attack on the United States. It comes in the wake of a massacre in Russia last month when ISIS gunmen killed at least 145 people at a concert venue. FBI Chief Christopher Wray said he's never known a time where there are so many threats to U.S. public safety. In a hearing before the House of Representatives panel, Ray said threats are elevated. There are fears of a similar organized attack on a civilian target like the one in Moscow. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will visit Arizona today, just days after the state's top court reinstated a law from 1864, criminalizing and banning abortions in nearly all circumstances. Tony Waterman has more. Harris's team is calling this visit a fight for reproductive freedoms. And while on the ground in Tucson, she is expected to blast the state Supreme Court decision and blame former President Donald Trump. It is her second trip to Arizona in the span of a month, an indication of just how significant this battleground state is going to be to this year's elections. Nationwide, polls show that abortion is the most important issue for one in eight voters. And that's what you need to know at this hour. I'm Julia Chapman in London on Salem News Channel.
Welcome back to the Jeff and Bill Show. Right after this, I'm heading downtown, and you can join me for the March for Life, Colorado March for Life. If you want details, marchforlife.org backslash Colorado. The rally starting, pre-rally concert starts here in just about 15 minutes, and then rally at the Capitol, 11. March begins at noon. You don't even have to register. Just show up, have fun, hang out with some pro-lifers. By the way, I just saw this breaking news. They got enough signatures for um, the abortion constitutional amendment to uh, be on the ballot this year. So it's going to be a big battle because that's likely going to mean you probably already saying, well, don't we already have unrestricted abortion in the state? Yes. And with a constitutional amendment, they can force taxpayers to pay for it. Yeah. The other thing is that's the goal is to push back against a national abortion ban. That's yep. the other step, too, is they're going to have to. Yeah, they want to get into that fight. They want to make sure because if it's just a law, national abortion man will supersede it. Mm-hmm. But if it's in the state constitution, a national law bumps up against it. And so they're going to challenge that in court and try to get the Supremes to do something different. That's the other tactic here. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. That's right. That so, and voter turnout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's number exactly. one. More, more than the issue. Exactly. Number one is voter turnout. You and yep. I both know that, my friend. 100%. That's exactly right. So uh, if you want to join me down at the Colorado March for Life, you can right after this show. Let's go to Ron in Colorado Springs. Thanks for being on the Jeff and Bill show. Good morning, Ron. Well, I'm not there today, but uh, I got you on iHeartRadio. Hey, I'm familiar with Dave, and uh, my comments on him is I just uh, I don't trust him. He has pulled so many shenanigans to keep people out of the party that do not think exactly like him and toe the line. I, I think if you elect him, you're going to end up with the Republican version of a swamp creature um, because I, I don't think he'll ever be inclusive, like I say, of people in the middle or who who might not toe the line. I remember um, George Carlin had a line in, in talking about the government and, and its relation to people. And he says, remember, it's a club and you're not a member. And I think Dave kind of has that attitude. Ron, who, the Republicans are the club. Who are you supporting for the Republican primary congressional district five in Colorado Springs? Um, five, is that the one crank is in? That's correct. Or that's four. Okay, yeah, Jeff Crank. And I don't I don't even know Jeff Crank, but I know enough about um uh Dave that Jeff has got to be a better alternative. I just don't trust the guy. Ron, well, I appreciate the call. Thanks, Thanks so much, Ron from Colorado Springs. Hey, Jeff Hunt here for my friends at Dan Kaplis Law. Dan suggests that you should choose a lawyer who shares your values because who you choose to represent you in an injury case says a lot about you to everyone involved in the case. Dan Kaplis is the son of a police officer. Dan is also a former seminarian. Dan has, has dedicated the last 40 years of his life to helping people who are hurt in serious motor vehicle crashes. Dan is believed to be the only lawyer in Colorado history to win five straight multi-million dollar verdicts in Colorado crash cases. Dan is also believed to have won the largest truck crash verdict in Colorado history. Dan Kaplis Law is the official law firm partner of the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche. Dan Kaplis Law is a serious firm for serious cases. Dan accepts righteous injury cases on a percentage fee basis so that he can represent good people from all walks of life without regard to ability to pay. If you need Dan's help, give him a call. 303-770-5551. That's 303-770-5551 or hit dancaplislaw.com. That's Dan C A P. LISlaw.com. We'll continue with your calls and text next. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
Welcome back to the Jeff and Bill Show. Let's go to Nick in Denver. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is uh, my wish list of things that will should happen to correct a lot of the problems in this country. It'll probably not happen in my lifetime. But in any case, number one, all legislation that is passed has to have an expiration date. And then it has to be reviewed by the legislature to renew it. What happens now is legislation goes on and on and on and on forever, and all we're doing is piling more laws and rules and regulations, and it's almost impossible to even govern anymore. My my uh, two- my favorite is that we spend most of our time passing laws to deal with the effects of laws that we've passed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. So, yeah, keep going, one, Nick. Time uh, has to be a time limit on all legislation in order to re- to renew it. You have to prove that we still need that legislation. Two, a cost has to be, or an estimated cost has to be attached to that legislation because too often people forget. Yeah. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, everything has a cost. They do that in Colorado. Has- yeah, there's a there's a, a page attached to each bill that lays out what the potential costs are. Well, well, I don't know if it's if the legislation even follows it at all, but. I mean, no, what, Demo- uh, Democrats just don't care. I mean, they, it, it's not their money, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so those are the two things I'd like to see pass. And uh, what's really scary, if you Google you, the death, the death dime, uh, time bomb in this country, we're going into the death something like a billion dollars every five seconds. Every hundred and days. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know as well as I do, this cannot go on. Yep. This Nick, go on. you're right. I yeah. appreciate the call. Nick from Denver. Thanks so much. Eventually. Uh, hey, it's been a great show. It's been a great week, man. It has been just it's last so cool. weekend. We were down at the Colorado State Assembly. Um, I have applied for press credentials for the Democrat Assembly, which is tomorrow. Nice. Yeah, I'll see if they come through. I, I got a, um, a uh, email from an organization that wants to know if I want press credentials, and I'm trying not to feel like they are judging me. It's for the uh, Mile High 420 Festival. <laughs> I, I, Give I'm, them to me. I'll I'm go sitting, down. And I'm sitting there going, hang on. And the, but the thing was, <laughs> it was addressed to me at my Salem email. I'm like, Dear Bill, we on. know you really like the sticky green. Yeah, I figured it's just Come like, down. I, I figured the email was going to be, we've listened to the show a couple of days. We figured out you have to be high on the air. If there's only <laughs> one way any of this nonsense could come out of your mouth, you oh, have to be man. an enthusiast. That's a, that's a work Jane. hazard to I go down know. there and lose some brain cells. I know. Hey, uh, during, fun, the like, <laughs> seven o'clock, yeah, right. during the 7 o'clock hour, we hosted Stefan Tubbs, former host here on 710K in US. He gave us an update on the Aurora Dentist. Eight o'clock, Dave Williams joined us and took on all of our questions about the controversy he's facing as chairman of the GOP. And then nine o'clock, Jennifer Say joined us um, on her new athletic brand. It's been a great show. If you missed it, go to 710knus.com, download the podcast. Up next, Charlie Kirk. So you want to stick around? I'm heading to the Colorado March for Life. You've been listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS. We'll see you Monday. Have a good weekend.